Here we are, goddammit. Episode 30 fucking six. Who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk it? Way back in March of 2021, which is when I started this damn thing, early on I had a short list of people uh, right off the bat. It's like, I got to get these people on. And my guest tonight was one of those people. And hey, here we are today. I'm glad. I'm glad uh, he was able. We were able to work it out, make it happen. Uh, and it's gonna be cool. So, a lesson to you kids: just be persistent. Uh, if you want, make shit happen. Make shit happen. Just keep trying it, right? So, there you go. That's a lesson for the day. Uh, but you're tuned in to jamming out all badass on Francisco. Uh, like I said, this is episode 36. I got Brad from Absconder. He was in Morgue, Wrist, Tumblr, a um, bunch of cool shit. Uh, we'll get into all that, plus a lot of other shit uh, that Brad's done over the years. He's been involved in uh, several things besides just playing in bands, so we'll get into all that. Uh tonight so again thanks for hanging out tell everybody to share this shit on your facebook pages your instagrams your whatever uh is it not live one no this is live man i'm here we're live 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 undead we're here uh but somebody may be watching this on the preview i mean on the replay when it's done but right now it's 7.07 p.m. in Texas, and we're fucking live. Also in Chicago. But, uh, yeah, man. Yeah, man. So cool. Corpus. Ah, badass. John Grave. John Grave rules. He's at the hospital watching this shit now. In between, he's fucking pumping iron, dude. He's pumping iron. So, um. Uh, but yeah, I'm a little excited about today. Like I said, I've been wanting to get Brad on since the very beginning. Here we are. So cool, 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 cool. Uh, first things first, reminder, Sound Exchange. Go to Sound Exchange in Houston, man. If you're from Houston and you've never been to Sound Exchange, fuck is wrong with you? Go to Sound Exchange as soon as you fucking can. Tell them I sent you. Go buy a bunch of shit. They carry. They carry. All the heavy shit that carry all kinds of shit. So uh, go Sound Exchange if you're not in Houston. Sound Exchange Houston.com. You can find them on, on Instagram, Sound Exchange, on Facebook, all that shit. Uh, coolest record store in Houston, man. Uh, so I'm glad that they support the show. I support them. Hell yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Bronchitis says it's slowing Lily down. Badass. That's what I'm talking about. So, but yeah, go to Sound Exchange Houston. Uh, those of you who ever come, if you're in a band and you come play in Houston, get there early, go to fucking Sound Exchange. Hell yeah. Got done. Man, that's that's fucking death metal right there, dude. Just got done drilling into a dude's, dude's skull. <laughs> Badass. Uh, so... Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I need to get rid of that. Put that up there. And I, I guess that's kind of redundancy, right? Oh, I have the, the, the banner and the fucking thing there. But why the fuck not? Why the fuck? Oh, uh, let me see. What else? Anything else I need to cover before? Uh, hang on. Again, man, tell everybody to come hang out. Come hang out. You ain't doing nothing. It's fucking cold like all over the United States right now. So I know you motherfuckers aren't going anywhere right now. Uh, Brad was shoveling uh, snow for like the past two days just to get into his house to be able to do this fucking show, man. So, I mean, come on. Help me out here. Disguster666. He's jamming out all about us. Um, but yeah. All right. All right, uh, ladies and gents, boys and girls, uh, whoever's out there checking us out. 
Uh, my guest today, as I mentioned a little bit already, Brad Boldak. He's been uh, jamming out all about it as an absconder. I think absconder might be his most recent thing. Uh, we'll get into all that. He was in Morgue. Uh, you guys, kind of older people, remember Morgue uh, from from way back. Uh, a couple other bands, Wrist and Tumblr, that will you may may maybe you don't know about them. We'll find out about them today, and you might you might check it out. Might might like it. So, everybody, uh, stand up, get on on your feet, and let's welcome Brad. What's up, Brad? <laughs> Brad always always supporting uh, uh, Illinois bands. That's a Devastation shirt, right? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I could. We could talk for as long as a Roy show just on Illinois right now. <laughs> well, you know what? Be, That's one of the things. When I first started, when I first started, that was one of the things. And I think I talked to you about it. I was like, I yeah. wanted to. I, I still want to do it where I get some uh, Illinois people. Let's talk about the the uh, totally un underappreciated worldwide yeah. Illinois scene. Uh, yes. So the old slaughterhouse. Things. As we so used to call it, the old slaughterhouse. The old slaughterhouse. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So. Oh yes. But yeah, dude. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm glad. I'm glad you we were able to yeah. make, make this happen, dude. I know. Yeah, me too. You were one of the first people I asked. I remember. Yeah, and uh, so I, I used to run a I, my home computer before was a MacBook Pro that was like eight years old, and it finally like completely shit out and died on me, and uh, so. Uh, yeah, I finally got a new computer, so I'm finally able to do this. Hell so, yeah. Um, yeah. What yeah. Is, what are, what's up to fucking Andre, the number one cadaver, mm -hmm. and fucking <laughs> Disgust score? I'm ready to fucking have a battle royal. It's going to be me and King Kong Bundy versus you <laughs> and Bruiser Brody in the steel cage. <laughs> coming down Hell with yeah. the elbow. Yep. Yeah. King Kong Bundy and Bruiser Brody. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Taking me way back. Well, uh, we could talk old wrestling, a whole nother show, but it would have to be only dudes from the seventies or eighties. Otherwise, yeah, I don't really know my shit. Only seventies and eighties, then I know shit. But yeah, exactly, dude. I, I uh, in Houston, <laughs> we had a major fucking wrestling promotion. Uh, Houston wrestling here. Mid -South oh, dude, wrestling. Remember, yeah, those the Texas dudes were awesome. Uh, fucking obviously the Von Erichs were the big guys, but also like uh. Iceman King Parsons was a Texas dude. He came out of the Texas wrestling thing. Uh, King Kong Bundy was in Texas for a long time. Fuck, who are some of the other dudes in Texas? Uh, uh, yeah, the Von Erics. The Von Erics. Of course, of course, Von Erics. Yes. Hey, uh, I, I, uh, I was gonna bring this up later, but I know you're a massive uh, skating, skating guy, skater. All the whole skating yeah. thing from back in the 80s. and uh, Yeah, man. Uh, shout favorite. out to fucking Sam Hits from Creature Record, Creature Skateboards, man. He's a huge fucking death metal fanatic. Uh, he's totally into that shit, man. There's, there's a lot of people that fucking don't realize that, like, some of the old skaters used to be into, like, fucking doing their shit to metal and shit. Like, especially <laughs> the Texas dudes, man. Yeah. Two of my three top favorites... Te Favorite dudes are from Texas, from Zorlax Skates. It was Craig Johnson and fucking John Gibson. And those dudes used to shred the fucking Venom and and Slayer and shit. Those dudes were into it back then, man. Those uh, are and those dudes are the gods, man. Those dudes in like fucking Bill Danforth and shit. I messaged John Gibson today. I'm 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 trying to get him on the show. Oh yes, that'd be awesome, dude. John, uh, my yeah. my friend, uh, my friend Billy, who's in HRA and all that with me. He's uh. He's been like talking to him a lot, I, I, like, like a lot lately. And, Killer. Uh, so, uh, well, I know Johnny. We, we might work that Johnny. out to where he's on here because he was also in the in the band Bar Card. Which yeah, is hell an yeah, amazing hardcore band from Houston. Hell yeah, of course. So, uh, yep. So zero, zero skateboards. All those dudes. Yep. Right yep. Yep. But, I yeah. mean, nowadays, dude, if you want to check out a dude named uh, Jerry Gurney. He's a he's a fucking fanatic uh, weirdo, uh, fucking uh, disgust or fucking Dylan. He knows there's a bunch of dudes up yeah, in Portland way that are all like underneath that goddamn bridge at Burnside, fucking just tearing shit up. The the Baku dudes up in Vancouver, they're all fucking repping like uh, blasphemy shirts and shit. 
Yeah, you know, those are guys you told me about because I remember watching yeah. some videos of that. They're like yeah, skating actually, and they're playing like like blasphemy and all this fucking. Yeah, music. yeah. We actually Abscond have a song about them on uh on one of our demos uh called Can't Say No to the Knife. That's actually about the Baku and uh and yeah, man, I'm totally into that shit, man. I'm not I'm not I'm not afraid to say it, man. If I if I get uh if I do luckily enough to get John on here, oh, fuck. I'll, uh, I'll 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 have hopefully you can make it. I'll have you on as a fucking guest. Oh here. man, I know you really yeah. fucking like John Gibbs. I yeah, mean, Zorla yeah, dude. Here, you know, so. I mean, dude. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, I, I for real. Like, here's this is on my wall here. This is uh, so that's, that's my this. This is my Craig Johnson board that I rode yeah. when I was when I was a kid, you know. Yeah, and then my awesome. other favorite, my other favorite rider is uh, uh, this guy here, Bill Danforth, and that's autographed by uh, that by Tony Alva. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, that, yeah. and it's uh, and it's autographed by both Danforth and uh, and Alva, and uh, that was a gift uh, from a very close friend of mine, Steve Hill, who was uh, the roadie for Morg. He actually got that for me, and uh, yeah, fucking dude, Bill Danforth and the Zorlak dudes, those guys tore it up, man. Fucking uh, well, John Gibson. John Gibson was recently like inducted into like the fucking Hall of Fame and shit. So. Yes, yes, yes. That'd be something else cool to talk about. All right, so uh, moving on, let's uh, let's get into get into it now. Now, yeah. Uh, growing up, did you ha was there a lot of a lot of music around your house, like as a kid growing up, or you yeah. Know, Talk a little bit about growing up and if, it, you know, you grew up around music. Yeah, um, it's weird. Like, nobody in my music, nobody in my family played music. Um, but all of my family listened to it. And I have five older brothers. Uh, and I'm the youngest of six boys. And I'm 50. So my parents are both alive, lucky for me. Uh, my mom is about to turn 80 years old. Uh, wow. So uh, my dad's 84. And, uh, yeah, all... Everybody in my family loved listening to music, so that shit, I mean, like, my earliest memories, yeah, man, it's like fucking A-tracks, CDs, cassette, or not CDs, tapes, <laughs> uh, and vinyl of everything from, like, my dad would listen to shit like Cannonball Adderley and, like, you know, jazz shit, Miles Davis and shit like that, and my mom would listen to, like, Peaches and Herb, like, shit like that or stuff, you know what I mean? Like, First and then my brothers, and then, and then my brothers... Yeah, the first time ever that's been Peaches mentioned. And Peaches and her shake your groove thing. Anyways, uh, fucking uh, yeah, and, and then my brothers were all like, you know, all the earliest, all the early like rock and roll and hard rock stuff. And being the youngest, my brothers saw all the shit like in their prime. Like I know everyone always says, "Oh, I wish I was born a little bit earlier." Well, I kind of feel that way too because my brothers got to see like you know. Kiss in the Heyday and UFO, they were at the shows that Strangers in the Night were recorded at, you know, like they got to see like the prime shit, man. But uh yeah. I, I was I was just lucky that I had brothers that were into it and you know, at thirteen my mom finally turned me loose and let me start going to shows with them and then that was the end. <laughs> so. Oh shit. Um uh so I guess, I guess your your older brother is the one that kind of kind of led you into the to the heavy shit, huh? Yeah, I mean, again, like I remember, like earliest memories are like a tracks of like Van Halen one, Hellbent for Leather, you know, Deep Purple, Machine Head, shit like that. Like, and they were and they were going to see these shows, and so they were like into that. Like as far as like the underground stuff. My next oldest brother, who's five years older than me, like yeah. he had a friend who was into like, who had like venom and shit like that. And by that time, I was already like living in the import section of Crow's Nest and Joliet, um, which was the which was the the equivalent of your sound exchange. It was this fucking amazingly giant store in Joliet that had this insane, insane amount of just killer underground shit. And they had the most badass magazine rack in the world. It was like they had like metal forces from like Ground Zero, and they would get in Burn magazine from Japan and Kerrang and like all that shit. And so, as a little fucking 
scumbag, I would ride my bicycle all the way across town, even if I didn't have money to spend, and just sit there and read the magazines and shit and just stare at all the shit and look through the imports and, and whatever, man. Fucking Crow's Nest, like, ruined my life or, or so made it better Joliet, or whatever. How, how big of a town is Joliet? Ah, shit. I don't know. Uh, Aaron Mulder, you're there. Tell him how big it is. I don't know. It's 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 a burb of Chicago. It's a south burb. A lot of people talk shit on it. I love living there. Uh, you know, Joliet Jake and fucking uh, the Blues Brothers. That was based on jo that, that first prison they pull up to is the old Joliet prison. And, you know, we got fucking Lionel Richie from Joliet representing. <laughs> is he really? Yeah. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of people, but fucking... Uh, I don't know. It's it's a. I don't. I don't know. It was a. It was a. It was a weird town, kind of. But th that record store was just fucking enormous, and like had everything. And anything they didn't have, they could order. Like I ordered. Like I remember being a fanatical about shit, uh, and and like they ordered me like the Wasp live at the Lyrium or Lyrium or whatever the VHS of that, and like. I would order shit that I saw in Kerrang or, or whatever, and they would get it for me like anything, man. They were what, they were all uh, about it, man. This comment reminds me, uh, something you don't see anymore, you don't see import sections anymore. Yeah. You know, you yeah, know what I mean? It's weird. It's weird. I mean, there's, no, still stuff all, being, there's still stuff being brought in from, you know, all over the world, but there's yes. no, like, import section anymore, which it's kind of weird to, 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 to think about that. It, it's yeah. Just, like, not a thing anymore. Yeah, and that, 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 that yeah. Extra, right? Pay a little yeah. Extra yeah. Yeah. I mean, but that but but for that for that shit, I mean, you know, I mean, this is like keep in mind this is like mid mid 80s, you know, that I'm talking about and like right. back then like that's how you'd have to get it like through an right. import, you know, cuz there wasn't other than the big bands, I mean, you know, I mean, again, like I don't know, fuck you're probably gonna you were probably gonna maybe ask this anyways but like so the first show i went to was crocus opening for sammy hagar in, oh, wow. and that was like 83 or 80 or uh, 84 and then like the very next year 85 it was you know i was at you know metallica with um wasp and armored saint on ride lightning tour and then you know within less than a year from there i'm like you know seeing fucking Jesus, I don't even know, like some small club show of like Carnage, Illinois, or like uh, Zyklon B from Illinois or some shit. I don't know. Like it like quickly was like stadium shows that like, you know, but as soon as I was soon, like it wasn't, a, it was like the minute I turned 16, I was going to every underground show I could go right. to. Uh, so obviously, I mean, you know, we all had that gradual progression yeah. from like rock to more extreme music and all that. Uh, yeah. So before you were in any bands, I mean, you uh, you were you tape training and all that. When did you get into all that? Yeah. So is so basically, again, like I just would buy everything I could, and then of course pen bangers and shit. Uh, you know, metal forces. Oh man, you hate the Red Rock. Let's do that. Uh, anyways, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, metal forces and those zines. I would start I'd start seeing those in there. I'd start writing people or writing bands and then eventually like uh i didn't really have enough of a list to tape trade until i there was a dude that was from uh that i'd start seeing at shows called named jeff johns he ended up working at uh reckless in chicago for a while uh he used to go out on tour with that band los crudos uh i don't know he's been around for a long time but he uh he, I started trading with him, and he got me a lot of shit, like Crab Society North demos and shit. There was some other wow. dude, Sean Perzo from uh, Northern Indiana, and some other dudes from around the Chicagoland area that I'd start getting shit from. Ted from Morgue, you know, I he I got some stuff from him. Actually, I think the earliest stuff of Devastation Illinois I got was from Ted, and like just anywhere I could. And yeah, so tape trading started, and like. Uh, and that was around the time that I started my zine, Grim Death. I was still in high school. And um, it was just like dudes that were my buddies uh, that I would take to shows. Like, uh, and hell yes, Brian H. Hegwitz Records, Import Section Ruled. But like, I would just start bringing buddies from my high school to shows with me. And then they started getting into it too. Like, 
Andy Horath and and uh, Doug Schofield and some other local dudes uh, that were in my high school, and then of course like Steve Hill, who ended up going on tour with uh, with us in uh, in Morgue. But uh, and then eventually it's weird because my one of my older brothers start was working at a grocery store, and he's like, yeah, I got this friend, uh, and he's really into a lot of this stuff that you're into. You need to meet this dude. His name's Ken, and I'm like, oh, cool. And uh, and then he one day he introduced me to Ken and. Ken Escobedo and Ken uh, had never uh, didn't know about tape trading, didn't know about fanzines or the underground, but he had a shitload of records, you know, like he had, he brought over like his like early angel, Witch and fate's warning records and shit. And I'm like, cool, man. Like that's how you get started. Like just tape, you can dub albums too. It doesn't have to be like live shows and, oh, yeah, absolutely. and demos or whatever. And then, uh, and you know, and then, and once Ken got, got the bug man it didn't take him long and he was off and running fucking writing to every goddamn band he could you know did you and so know? like dan, and dan hassey who who did all the logos for me shout out to dan he's he's the guy that did the morgue logo the absconder logo he did broken hopes logo he did a lot of logos um he used to go to all the shows with me too and hang out with me and ted and and ken and he he he, he just he fucking would get get in the shit too and like find bands we'd all like we'd find shit in, you, uh, in any magazine or did you have any uh did you trade with anybody overseas like man i did but i i couldn't even tell you their names right off the top of my head i know uh, there was one guy who worked ended up working at peaceville named darren and i know I, I i traded with a guy um actually from the philippines uh he used to do this zine called inverted grind zine um i did a, i did used to do scene reports for that that zine they were out of the philippines um, shit. I, I mean, there was a lot of dudes, just pretty much, uh, anybody that I could, that, that would trade with me. Like at first it was kind of just like, I'd write to bands. And then, uh, eventually it got to that point. Like once I started the zine, then the tape trading started more cause I was getting shit in for the zine. There were, there was, a there was a zine out of Houston. I was going to ask you about, uh, there, uh, I think the girl that ran it was named Avon. Yeah, and it was SGUM, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, in fact, uh, she, might uh, be, she might be watching actually. That's cool. Uh, so I don't know if it was in my first issue of Grim Death or my second issue of Grim Death, but one of those, uh, there's an ad for her zine in there. Um, I, I know, I know that you know, so I trade ads with people, and when I was trading ads for zine, zine ads. You know, uh, we would talk about, uh, oh, you know, I'd be like, oh, do you trade? And then I would start trading with them. Because I remember getting shit from, like, other people, too. Um, you know, Ronnie from Morbid Mag or, like, uh, a dude from Final Holocaust zine from Belgium. or Oh, yeah. Uh, and then, um, I don't know. There was other local zines. The first zine I ever got. Was Fornado. This is it was it was a Chicago zine, um, and uh, a guy named Mark Hezwala wrote it, and I just saw it and I was like, I can do this, man. Like this is like <laughs> super simple, man. It's just some well, zero shit and some fucking interviews and you know some fucking photos and some reviews and man, I can do this shit. So that was when I was just like, fuck it, man. And my brother was in the printing business, so he's like. Oh yeah, I, we can do a glossy cover, and we and I can make the photos look a little better or whatever. So it was nice. He was he was able to you know to to like you know help me yeah. out, make it look a little bit better. But yeah, uh, I was going yeah. to ask you who. Uh, hey, look. Speaking of, you just mentioned her, Yvonne from Scum. Ha, awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, that's what I was going to ask. Uh, yeah. Who? Uh, I, I mean, you kind of answered it already about it. You know what? What? What inspired you to, to, to start a zine? Now I have this photo, which is ep, uh, episode uh, issue number two. Uh, yeah, yeah. Did you? Uh, how many? How many of these did you do? Like three, right? Yeah, I only did three issues because uh, by the third one, uh, tape trading and morgue started to like really take all my time because I. I didn't have a life, man. It was like all just like all I gave a shit about was like writing people, like fucking. Just yes, you're right, Fraser. You hell yeah. <laughs> we'll get into that, Fraser. We'll get into that. Yeah. Yes. I we actually we played another Houston show that I have no recollection of really. really? <laughs> and I have no flyer. Yes. 
and it was just us and two locals and it was some weird ass place it didn't make sense it, it was on the last tour we ever did it was uh fuck man i don't know if, if ryan ends up showing up in the chat he might uh pop, pop in um later he's he's uh he's just getting off but uh off of work somewhere in tennessee but um he might remember the, the name of the place but yeah who was the uh, who was the first like illinois band that, that you discovered underground band do you remember or was it a couple of well, the same i mean time? i remember the, the first ones that i saw in the record store were these um were these compilations uh chicago metal works compilations that just had a bunch of different bands on it had like shit like maelstrom and fucking and then like the slaughter destroyers uh, album and shit like that but then like but i mean like being from joliet like aurora is just up the road so fucking trouble like i mean trouble was the first local band that i went to go see that i was just and and that was like uh and it was trouble and e-trope and it was at a place called the alamo ballroom and i think there's i think the the re-release of the skull has the live show of the trouble set from that and they were fucking amazing so those dudes were like the earliest dudes, but as far as like the heavier shit, um, cause then it was like, I mean, then I was getting everything from like my trader buddies. Like, I mean, life sentence for the hardcore shit for sure, man. Yeah. And then, and then like, you know, I mean, fuck dude, my brothers were, would listen to winter Hawk. I mean, that was like 81, maybe there was a hard rock band called the boys, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah. you're talking early, early shit, you know, like, uh, and then, but, but then like you, there were, there was a thing called the Illinois entertainer. And then you'd read about, you know, that was where I'd see shit about like war cry, which is like Speckman's first band or like yeah. witch Slayer, or like iron cross or maelstrom or like, I don't know, fucking all those. All, so it was like the, the thrash bands that not us, uh, N A T A S who turned into not us later. Um, shit like that. Um, I don't know. There was so much of it, man. But uh, did you uh, did you see? Uh, I was gonna. I, I know. I think you told me you saw Devastation live. I think you told me that. Oh, I did not get to see oh, Devastation oh, live. Did. No, no I wish, man. I wish. No, I never saw them live. Um, have video no, no, footage. No. Have audios. Uh, know those dudes. Um, you know the. Uh, but uh, didn't get to see them. Didn't get to see Terminal Death, unfortunately, which are like. Again, for like death metal, Devastation Illinois and Terminal Death for me, like those were like the first two, like that I was just like, holy shit, man. <laughs> and then from there it was like all of Speckman's so, projects. Man. Jesus Christ. Because then there was all of Speckman's projects you had happening so fast after one another with yeah. Master and I mean War Cry Master, uh, Death Strike, Funeral Bitch. That's fucking amazing. But like the early shit for Underground, it was like, Trouble, Etro, Snow White, you know, that shit. Um, yeah, Brian just mentioned Burnt Offering. That's another fucking early one. Yeah. Uh, love them, man. Oh, fucking, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of Chicago shit, Chicago, Illinois area that's just like, you know. Yeah. I, I think I, I've asked Scott, I was like, why do you, why do you think, uh, I mean, Chicago had a lot of fucking great bands, or I say Chicago, you know, obviously Illinois. Uh what is it that, I mean, because it, it, it seems like it was maybe not overlooked, but just didn't get the attention that, like, you know, New York or, or whatever. Oh, I agree with you. I, I agree. Just, I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. I think that people out there know about the bands. I mean, obviously. Yeah. Um, but as far as, like, yeah, I mean, like, nobody's like, oh, New York death metal, Florida death metal, Swedish death metal. Not enough people talk about Illinois or Chicago death metal. Sure, I agree with you 100%. I think my opinion as to why that would be would be probably because nobody sounded the same at all. Like in New York, it was like, there was a lot of that sound, like the, er the early incantation immolation mortician kind of had that sound. Florida definitely had a sound. Sweden definitely had a sound. Chicago didn't have a sound because everybody kind of was doing their own things, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was all, death thrash into death metal into whatever the fuck it became but yeah um but yeah i mean there's I mean, so even, much even shit like your, even your like quote unquote like bigger bands that got more well known weren't on like labels that everybody knew which is weird <laughs> yeah. i mean like impetigo cyanide yeah. i mean yeah. master you know just shit like that it just didn't get it, it's fucking weird how it just yeah 
I guess it yeah, just no. uh, I guess the label's just getting fucking big. macabre, man. I mean, macabre. Jesus, man. Yeah, yeah, when, yeah. When, I, when I first started macabre. trading, yeah, yeah. When I first started trading, man, everybody that traded with me just wanted anything and everything they could get a macabre. So I'd go see Macabre and I'd buy like six shirts just to trade five of them to people in Europe because they would trade me anything for, for a Macabre shirt because back then nobody had Macabre shirts. This was before they ever toured Europe. You know yeah. what I mean? Like this is when they were just a, uh, when like Grim Reality and Gloom were out or yeah, selling records and, out of their like, and clothes. it was just like, man, that shit was awesome, man. They, they, oh my God. Those early Macabre shows are fucking, oh, I get chills thinking about how amazing they were back then. It was just like, so fucking good, man. So you so saw good. the uh, you saw like uh, Macabre, Impetigo, and all those shows early on, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that's, yes, yes. That's fucking amazing. Yeah, I mean, I I wouldn't I would try not to miss a Macabre show or a Abomination show or a Master show. I I mean, I'm pretty. Sh I know I saw all the Chicago shows of Impetigo. Shit, I almost booked them at a show. There's a flyer that goes around. That of a show that never happened in Joliet. I actually booked shows in Joliet for a minute, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I was, was, was going to get into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was gonna, and there was a show that I was setting up that never that fell through. That was Impetigo, Macabre, and Funeral Nation. God, um, yeah. And uh, and that, and I mean, I was like eighteen years old. I don't that's know. One what of those, I uh, doing, that's one of those. It's one of those shows where uh, you don't get a breather, right? Yeah, so, for sure. Right, so. Uh, Oh, was there was there any uh, any bands that you interviewed that you were like, oh fuck, I can't believe you know? Because obviously back then you had to write a band and you'd have to wait for them. And uh, yeah, you know, was there a band that you interviewed? You were like, oh fuck yeah, you know they wrote me back or that you got super excited about? Yeah, I mean there was a few. Uh, I mean autopsy, obviously. Um, thinking, yeah, just, I mean I, th that that's obviously uh, a cool one. Um, I loved, uh, again, my zine was like late 80s. Uh, I think I started, I mean, I was in high school still, and I graduated high school in 89. I think I started writing it in 87, maybe. The first There's people listening and they weren't even born yet. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, so like the first issue, it was like literally like when that trend, it like was like right when like, thrash was getting into death thrash was getting yeah. into death metal like that was pretty much you can see it in the three issues that i did it was like the first one's like pretty much thrash the second one's like death thrash and then the last one's more like just death metal and like i don't i don't know like i the early on like there's a there's a interview i did with a texas band gamma side i was yeah. super stoked on that i loved them man i love that demo uh, I listened to the fuck out of that demo when it came out. I, guess, um, I got a story about 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 those guys. And this this was probably oh oh five where they were kind of coming back and like yeah doing shows. Well, they got booked at a place in Houston, and it uh, it didn't. I guess it didn't do well or whatever. And we we uh -huh. were having we were having like a total underground like noise fest thing with like Lethal Aggression, all these bands at at, at one time, and so. They asked, I remember Frank or somebody, I forgot who asked them, hey, you guys want to come play? You can play if you want, you know, have a better show. People were there. They came in and just fucking played on PLF's, like, uh, equipment and just fucking annihilated the place. There's like a bunch of, like, Damn. there's like a bunch of punk kids, like, fucking yeah. you know, slamming and shit to them. They're like, holy fuck, you know? So, uh, Damn. they still, they still, I've heard them still talk about that show, how they fucking just showed up to, like, some fucking, it was like a total DIY, like, fucking warehouse or whatever they came yeah. in yeah fucking they, they fucking annihilated the place it's fucking it was great man it was fucking that's great. awesome that's uh, awesome man all right so I, I have some photos you know i like to show photos uh, uh oh here, here's yep. one uh what 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 i see you have a your your zine shirt there it is yeah so that that's uh that's mark kezwala that did uh that fanzine that i showed you tornado he was like the influence for me to do a zine and that's uh nice. that's a picture of us He's wearing a Hellwitch demo shirt, and that's a oh, yeah. that, that's in 1989. That picture was taken at uh, Milwaukee Metal Fest three, and that Milwaukee Metal Fest three was one of the three best shows I probably ever saw in my life because that was Autopsy's first show ever outside of uh, outside of California in America, and that was yeah. also um, Obituary's first show outside of outside of Florida. Uh, and it was uh, also, I think one of the very first shows that,
that Death played with uh, with uh, James Murphy on guitar. But it was fucking uh, yeah, that was 1989. Me and Ken went up to that. Uh, cool, and I think maybe uh, Blasphemous Sam Taki went with us, this guy that used to hang out with us. Uh, I don't know if Sam's lurking in the background or going to watch later, but I know he'll be <laughs> checking this out for sure. All right, so but, uh, also, yeah. you know, uh, before, like I said, before we get into the band, you also uh, book some shows. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I have one flyer here that I found on your page. You booked yes. this show, right? Yep, sure did. Yeah. So what, yeah, so what, check what, memories, what memories do you have of this? Oh man. Uh oh boy. So that show in particular was awesome. It was uh great. Uh I know I've heard some other people talk some shit about some of the bands, uh those bands being rock stars, but I was an eighteen year old kid and I booked them and they were super cool to me and uh uh, uh had a great show. Um so basically what happened was that place that I booked was called the club. It was literally inside of a mall, not a strip mall, a fucking mall. <laughs> so um, it was bizarre. Luckily, it was on the end of the mall, so the mall would be closing and the show would be starting. So, but uh, yeah, there's um, there were several shows that I did there, but the two brothers that ran it, I basically showed them my fanzines and was like, "Yeah, I helped this guy do this uh, radio show." Um, uh, this metal radio show on this college radio station and I do these fanzines and I, and I, uh, <laughs> it's a Walmart now. That's true. Um, and, uh, and I tape trade and shit and I want to book this place. And he's like, and they were just doing punk shows at first. And he's like, they were like, yeah, I'm like, they're like, you can book what you want to, you know, and, uh, we'll talk about it. There's certain, there's certain bands that we want you to book that we like a lot. Um, but yeah, you can book your, your shit in there too. And so we'd have a lot of local punk shows. Um, there was some thra local thrash shows I did. I did some shows with uh, some bands from uh, Northern Indiana. I think Shades of Grey and uh, Thanatopsis came over and played. And uh, I know uh, uh, Carnage uh, from Illinois played. Um, and the opening band for that show was Subliminal Slaughter, which was Ted Van Tilburg from Morgue's yeah. band before Morgue. And that's a band that everybody should check out and Aaron should put out on Caustic set. Uh, so you, you used for this? I see Ticketmaster uh, in the flyer. Yeah, they, they had tickets available at Ticketmaster for some of the oh, shows, for the bigger shows. Dude, <laughs> um, so I also, I mean, just to give you an idea, these brothers, the one guy, his favorite band was The Romantics. And I booked ah, The Romantics. The secret and I, Yes. And I booked them and I, and the other brother's favorite band was ministry. And I booked ministry as a warm up show for their mind is a terrible thing to taste tour. her. Um, so like the next night they were playing in Chicago for the opening of the tour. Um, and it was like, fuck, I don't know. Uh, the place there, the venue they played in Chicago the night after was like a thousand or 2000 people. Like, and so I, had to call uh, up and see if I could get them to play this tiny ass club that held a few hundred people in Joliet. And, uh, and of course, when I talked to their manager, who was Al Jorgensen's wife, she laughed at me. And I was like, look, the owners of the club are pretty much telling me that I got to open budget for this because they want you guys to play here so fucking bad. And I don't tell tell I don't I don't want to be a jerk and disclose the amount of money, but we paid a fuck ton of money for this for them to come down and play in Jolia in this tiny ass club that held a couple hundred people. They put up the chain link fence in front of the stage, yeah, and it, yeah. was, open, and it was complete madhouse insanity. You know what um, I like about you know what I like about old flowers too when people used to like draw like the uh, the direction. maps how to get there. <laughs> draw the maps. Dude, I'll tell you what. Well, I mean, we can oh, talk okay. about this. Hell yeah. Well, you had to back then. Yeah, There's exactly. no fucking map quest. There was no fucking, there was no phones. You, if you didn't know where the fuck you were going, you're out of luck. Yeah. You had an atlas in your car. Look, man, when more, when more toured with autopsy, we had a goddamn atlas and we <laughs> had a pad of paper with fucking phone numbers and we would drive into the town and then we would call the club and be like, we're at this intersection. How do we <laughs> get there? Because there was no other way to do it. <laughs> Fuck, I, 
tour <laughs> nowadays with laptops and cell phones and GPS. Yeah. You'd have that shit, man. Fuck, yeah, dude. Man. I remember just driving places with like a huge fucking map, like you know, you know. And then if yeah. you went to another state, you got to get another fucking map, right? So yeah, but yeah. literally, we we just had a U.S. atlas. All right, so I found this photo. Is this your room way back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and there's three more on the left wall, but there's I had a, about twelve hundred tapes at that time. Damn. Uh, in my room. You like caps too? Um, I see like four or five caps in the corner there. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I had that little. I you, man. I wish I had one of the old Moore trucker hats. If anybody's got one out there, that thing sat about this tall. It was like uh, that fucking early Cooler guy in that Squidbillies cartoon or whatever. It was fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, but a friend of ours, uh, was, it was the first thing that we had uh, made was hats. It was more hats. And I don't know is, where the fuck those went. But. Is this you also? No, that's that's a dude that lived down the street from me. But, yeah, that's my room. Yeah, that was okay. that was my room. I kept that picture because there's some flyers up there. Right above him oh, on the oh, yellow oh. flyer. Uh, right above the yellow flyer, which is the first the day of death in Buffalo. Right above that yeah. is the flyer for that fucking Impetigo and Macabre show. Uh, and those were like, um, it was super cool. Macabre made this shirt that was an all over print and it yeah. had Macabre logos and bloody handprints all over it. And it was like this weird puffy ink. Like, I don't even know, man. I wish somebody still had this shirt to show you because it, it was a bizarre ass shirt. But again, that was one I bought like four or five of. And I traded dudes in Europe. I got an Invocator shirt for that. Well, I got a fucking oh. early Napalm Death shirt for that. I trade all kinds of shit for that. I see, uh, I see that, uh, what is it, Carnage Killing Spree there on the yeah, the yeah, yeah. Hell Witch yeah. Flyer. I think that's a oh, Houston cool, show. Cool. I think I have that Hell Witch Flyer. That's a Houston Could show. Could be, man. Could be, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Yvonne's asking about Shades of Grey. Uh, 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 did you ever book any shows at the Rink or Hammond? So did Hammond I, I did not, but I used to go to those shows all the time. My buddy Pete from Shades of Grey – uh, he did a bunch, and Tom from Thanatopsis booked a bunch of shows out there. Uh, of course, uh, man, I saw so many great shows in Stager. Fucking uh, uh, At War, Blind Illusion, fucking uh, Jesus, I don't even know, man. Master, DBC from uh, Canada. Um, and then that's where like Doomsday, the maimed dudes, started out. They used to be called Doomsday. Uh, when they were in high school, and uh, they were fucking great, man. Uh, and they'd play out there all the time. Uh, Macabre would play out there. Johnny Vomit would play out there. Um, all a lot of the early dudes would uh, would play out out that way. Um, and the like the thrash bands like your Tyrants Rain and shit like that. Um, Zyklon B was from out that way. Um, so a lot of that shit um, would would be out there. Yeah, yeah. Pete Clemens is still around, Yvonne. Uh, you just mentioned him, yep. And yes, DVC, Andre, they were fucking great live, yes. All right, so let's let's get into some music. Uh, 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 yeah. Morg, the uh, the first – hold on, let me see. Make sure I pick up – bring up the right one. The first, yep. the first recording, right? Recorded by famed producer Scott Carroll. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes. And he, there's, there's, yeah, a good, there's a funny story, or I guess a, I don't know about funny, but there's this good story <laughs> behind this recording. If you if you care to share, yeah, yeah. So yeah, Scott came down to Ted. Scott and Mike came down to Ted's basement to record us where we where we rehearsed, which is where that early video that you showed was was at. And uh, and we didn't know what the fuck we were doing, so we just had boombox recordings up to that point. And Scott was like, "Yeah, I have a four track. I'll come down and record you guys." And we're like, "Awesome." So he came down and recorded us. Um, and, uh, we were happy as pigs and shit because number one, somebody was actually coming to record us and gave a shit to, yeah. and took the time out to do that. And it was fucking Scott and Mike who were cool as shit. And, uh, I mean, I met those guys back in 88, I think 87, 88, uh, right around when they were putting out that first tape. And, uh, so yeah, it was uh, the, the funny, the funny story is that, uh, um, Scott had forgot to put the, hit the Dolby button. Uh, when we were recording it, so it, it sounds it sounds the way it does. <laughs> the other thing was I, my vocals were so fucking cashed and trashed when we like I like blew out my voice like right away doing the vocals. So I just started. So I just <laughs> I 
so I just started like drinking like bottles of honey and like yeah. just chocolate milk, anything I could get down there. Yeah. Best thing you ever, you ever did. You're right. You're probably right. It probably was the best thing we ever did because we weren't thinking it was, yeah, you don't, you're not so thinking. You're just like, okay. Yeah. So the lineup on this recording, <laughs> was that the initial lineup when you first got the band together? Or yeah. You- yeah. So the, yeah, the original lineup was, uh, yeah, Ted on drums and Daryl and uh, Tom on guitar and me on bass and vocals. And yeah, that was on the, on both the rehearsal demo and um and the demo as well <laughs> should have won a Grammy. a Grammy. all right so let's uh let's uh, let's, let's listen <laughs> if the songs to were it. better you would have it was our fault you didn't win it let's let's listen to a little bit of this fucking uh scott carroll production <laughs> yeah uh, let's listen here's to uh it. here's <laughs> i got it queued up on a certain part but here we go let's check it out <laughs> So uh, li- listen, listening to it all the years later, I don't know, I don't know how often you listen to your own shit, but uh, what what are, what are your thoughts? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, I still like all those songs, man. I like all the songs, and as far as the recordings go, I always love shit that sounds worse than sounds better nowadays. <laughs> so, um, I, I like I like listening to that shit because. It, I mean, it takes me back to the to Ted's basement, you know, really. I mean, I just fucking have a lot of good memories of being down there and fucking hashing all that shit out originally, you know, and, and, and writing it and what that was, what that like entailed for us, which again, we're just a bunch of stupid kids in the basement trying to write some metal and have fun and fucking, I don't know. It's, it's, it's weird. It's weird to every one of us that people even still like gave a shit about it. Like nowadays it's so bizarre. Like all like Ryan or yeah, <laughs> hell yeah, it was. And it sounds fucking great, man. Nick's <laughs> drums sound fucking deadly on that dead fetus. Hey, I, so Andrea, good, Andrea, yeah. I, I, I cut the, I, I don't want to sit here and play a whole song. Cause I, I never know. Cause I know they put it out on even the demo is like on, uh, <laughs> Yeah, um, Andre's got it all anyways. He's number one cadaver. He yeah, knows. exactly, exactly. He's got it all. He's got uh, it all. But, uh, but yeah, man, I, yeah. I, here's, here's, actually, here's a copy of it right here. Yeah, awesome. Um, but, yeah, man, that's, uh, that's, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's weird. Like, we, we were, I mean, when we first started, we we didn't have fucking real jobs. We didn't have any real lives. I mean, like I think one out of the four of us had a real girlfriend at the time. It was like we were down in that basement like three, four, five days a week playing because we didn't have fucking anything better to do, you know. Yeah. Um, nowadays it's hard to get a band together once a week. So I mean, yeah, I mean back then, me. back then it was simpler times. You know what I mean? Like it was either I was I was either at home writing to people or tape trading with people or else I was fucking or, or mailing people or <laughs> I 
Yes. I love, I, I still love old, old ads, man. Yeah. It's just man, I, I was the master. I loved cut and paste, man. I used okay, to love doing favorite. those. Me, me and, uh, and Daryl used to just love to just go really? to the fucking, there was a Ace Hardware that had a fucking copy machine for like a penny or something ridiculous. And we would just go there and like take Fangoria. Daryl would go to the grocery stores and buy those like checkout counter magazines with like unreal stories in them, you know, like, uh, you know, woman, 8,000 pound woman swallows a giant fly or whatever. And we would yeah, just yeah, like yeah. Cut, cut out pieces of those and make flyers and shit and just stupid shit. Um, uh, so Scott I Carroll was fired, was fired immediately after the first, after the first <laughs> demo. And where, uh, where did you, uh, so going on man, to this demo, uh, uh, we could, we could move on to that demo. What, uh, yeah. Where where, uh, where did you guys? Uh, well, you know what? Let's, let's let's check it. Let's check out a little bit of that one because there's, there's notably okay. notably different sound on this one. Uh, oh, it's so weird. Check it out. the songs and the band like the riffs and all that or was there a, like a soul writer or was it a kind of a collaborative uh, more more was collaborative for sure man um so i wrote all the lyrics and the song titles and did a lot of the arrangement but daryl and tom and T all of us would write riffs uh obviously ted wrote all of his own drum shit ted was fucking just such an incredible drummer and uh and Daryl and Daryl and Tom were totally like just two different guitar players from one another. Daryl is definitely like from the Randy Rhodes school. He wrote out every note of every solo, like was very like yeah. into being like, whereas Tom was more like Slayer, like I'm just going to whammy bar and do whatever kind of thing. And then later on we had different guitar players on the album and that's uh, or a different guitar player, which is Ryan who was like, giving lessons when he was 15 years old and was like super guitar player. So, um, but yeah, uh, earlier, early on, it was definitely like a collaborative thing. Like, so going back, like me and Tom and Daryl had a band called crematorium before Morg, Uh, and it was us three. And then we couldn't find a drummer. And we had this dude who just knew how to play like black black Sabbath was his favorite band and like what he based everything off of. And so he didn't even, he didn't know about thrash or death metal at all. And we were trying to write stuff. And the first song that we wrote in crematorium was a song I wrote called repulsive death that ended up moving over to morgue. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, he would play, he was trying to play like just like a four, four beat to it or something. And, we, we would go and see Ted's band play Subliminal Slaughter. We'd go and watch him practice, and we'd be like, man, if we could just get Ted to join the band, we'd fucking finally be able to do what we want to do. And finally, there was, Ted agreed to 
to play with us. And then that was, that was pretty much it. But yeah, initially we just got together and we just jammed repulsive death because it was a song that was already done. And then from there, we just started writing collaboratively. Typically what would happen is people would come in with parts. Everyone would have different parts. And then I don't know. I like arranging more than I like writing. Uh, yeah. So I would, so we'd have like riffs, you know, a bunch of different riffs and then we I'd put them together or we would put them together or whatever. Yeah. And uh, so you're Lars Ulrich. And, uh, I, I don't know. Is that what he did? I think he arranged. I think he arranged. he arrange? Apparently, I, I thought that, that was Cliff back in the day, man. Uh, Shit. God hey, uh, I was going to bring up uh, what's always th stands out to me is the, the the sound of the kick drums on there. It, yeah, it, so it, that was like I, early on. That's old to have that kind of sound. Right. So let me. Yeah, I would like to talk about that just for a minute. Like, yeah. um, there are no triggers on there, um, and so what? How Ted got that sound? He got he he would he'd want he his favorite drummer was Dennis from Macau. And oh, yeah, he, yeah. he noticed right away that Dennis turned his beaters around. So hit, so the the hard, the plastic of the beater would hit the head instead of the soft part, you know? Oh. And so he started doing that. Well, he also noticed that Dennis would put something on his kick drum head to get that clicky sound. And so Ted... Now they sell them in drum stores that you can like, like it's like almost like a piece of hard plastic or metal you can put on your base yeah. on your kick drum head. Ted used to literally duct tape a piece of, of like thin metal on his bass drum head. And then he would turn around the, uh, the beater. So the plastic side of the beater was hitting the, that the metal. And then Ted played North drums, which were those crazy drums that like swooned out uh yeah. at the end so they were loud as fuck <laughs> and so uh and i say that because when we played in his basement he had him up on a little riser and i would stand right in front of him and when he would hit that double kick it'd be like right in the back of my fucking head <laughs> and he and we we didn't have to mic anything and they were loud as shit man it was so loud so uh yeah i mean ted ted early on like had that like it, it sounds very clicky but it's not a trigger at all. It was all just him turning around and getting that naturally. And he stole, he, he watched a lot of Dennis from for, to, to, to get that sound. I mean, you hear that, you hear that in the early, go back and listen to that early macabre, hear that, yep. hear that clicking right. on that. And you're like, wait a minute, grim reality and gloom. That's eighties, man. How the hell is that? Yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't around? yeah. That's a good guy to wasn't. fucking watch and try to learn. Yeah. That. Oh man, everybody would everybody from back back then would just fucking watch him and be like, God damn! All actually, all those dudes. But so let's talk about the, the you guys always had uh, your your covers. You didn't have like your you know your typical death metal or whatever covers, which I think is cool. Uh, who who uh, who would do the layouts and and all that for your for your for your demos and all that? Was that just a collaborative yeah. thing too, or was that you? Kind of, sort of, but it was kind of me and. Daryl Daryl did a, a little zine as well that he never really published, um, and so he was and he was a great artist. Daryl was really into art too, um, but uh, Daryl and I Daryl took the picture of the random decay statue. That was actually a statue that was in yeah. his front yard that just had it had just snowed, and he took a he took a black and white photo of it, and that was what we used that for. And then uh, I was. I think like I don't know. I was I was I had a book about Salvador Dali and saw this painting and was like, let's fucking use this. And like I, I was studying. I was I was in col. I started college and was taking all these psychology classes, and that's where all that shit came from. The severe psychopathology, personality yeah. conflict, all that shit. But yeah, I mean that's cool. I, uh, but as far as layout, that kind of shit, and then and then the uh, Eroded Thoughts album cover, I was at uh, I was going to college, at a, play, a junior college, the oldest junior college in the United States. It's actually an Answer on Jeopardy. Uh, is Joli <laughs> is Joli at junior college? No, oh, and uh, I was um, and there used to be an art exhibit area for the students there, and I would walk past it all the time when I was going to my classes. And I walked past it while we were uh, writing the record and uh, saw the album cover, the painting that's behind me right now, right 
Yeah, that, I was I was going to bring yeah. that up too. That's yeah. the original. Yeah, that, that's the yeah, original that, that, that is the painting. That's actually uh, acrylic see. and oil on canvas. Can you, can you, uh, uh, I don't that, know if you can get Leah, a little closer to yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, get some. It's about us. Yeah. Um, so that's the painting. And it's, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, this dude who, and I mean, it's, it's weird. Dude, and, dude was not in the metal who, uh, who did it. He just fucking did a painting that I just happened to walk past. And I was just like, holy shit, that's got to be the fucking, that I need to use that. And, uh, so how did the uh, how did the deal uh, with uh, Grindcore right? They're the ones that put that out. Uh, yeah. So how, how, how did that work out? So it was Olympic slash Grindcore, and Olympic Records was this label that was started by a guy named Marty Payne, who uh, some of you older dudes might know from the band Metal Onslaught. Uh, they put out an album called Cease to Exist. Uh, in uh, maybe eighty seven ish, uh, you got that one, Frazier? <laughs> you should. Uh, they, the CD version uh, of it came out on Shark Records, and it was a it was a split with uh, the uh, Morbid Visions Sepultura. There's actually a CD that has both Metal Onslaught and uh, Sepultura on it. Uh, uh -huh. Anyways, Metal Onslaught changed your name to Carnage. The Cardinals from Illinois, um, yeah. Killing Spree, and I was a huge fan of them. And I would, I'd go see Metal Onslaught and Carnage all the fucking time, and so I got to know those dudes really well. And Marty was telling me he was going to start a label, and I gave him the the you know the morgue rehearsal demo and demo, and he loved it, and uh, yeah. and was like, yeah, I want to do something with you guys. And at first, it was just going to be um, an EP. It was going to be an EP and an interview with the band on a CD. That was what he was oh, wow. originally going to put out. Yeah, bizarre, right? So uh, that was what he wanted to do. And then so we recorded half of it. And then he was like, now I want to do a full album. And then right around then, um, he, wanted, uh, he wanted to do a full album then. And he's like, oh, yeah. And this other dude that I know is starting a booking agency. And he wants to book you guys. And he's going to book this tour. And he's going to do this tour with autopsy and blah, blah, blah. And we were like, holy fuck. Or I was like, holy fuck. My, <laughs> you know, so um, what's bizarre about our record is we have two different drummers on it because, yeah. Um, well, going back, the first line of change was um, Tom. Uh, we got rid of Tom and got Ryan in the band after the demo and before the album um, and then finished writing the album with, it was Ted and me and Ryan and Daryl and we finished writing the album and then, um, and then we recorded half the first half of the album. And then we heard about this opportunity to tour and yep, that's, yep, that's me and Daryl in the studio. Uh, uh, Daryl with the wrench and me with the uh, bell shaker thing or whatever. That's a solid, solid sound studio. You might know it better for uh, where the Impulse Manslaughter's first record was recorded. Oh, no shit. Uh, yeah, yeah. Phil Bonet, RIP Phil, recorded a ton of fucking cool shit there, man. Um, I, I, I'm drawing a blank right now. Some of yeah. the old ancient dinosaurs will remember better than I, but yeah. Yeah. Um, it was a big ass studio and it was cool as hell. But um, anyways, so we found out we were going to tour and then that was when Ted left the band, unfortunately. And Ted was like, I, I can't tour. Touring life is not for me. And it, it was a heartbreaker. Uh, Cause Ted's close friend of mine still to this day. Uh, we, we actually didn't talk for a long, long time. There was, there was some bad, there, there was some, some rough stuff there with, with me and some of the guys that were in the band, uh, as far as with me and Tom and with me and Ted and all that kind of was water under the bridge later in the later years. We, you know, have, have since, uh, you know, mended things there, but, uh, yeah. long story short, we got Ryan in the band and then, uh, we recorded half the record with Ted and then we decided we we're going to be do this tour. And then, and then Ted quit. And then we got Nick from Dead Fetus because of the fucking awesome demo that Scott from Cyanide recorded with the Dolby on. That is a good, um, that is a good demo. 
Yeah, man. So Nick Nick was a great drummer too in his own right. Uh, totally different style than Ted, but really good and powerful. Uh, and so he came in and finished the record. So bizarrely, I don't know how many death metal albums you see out with two different drummers on it, but <laughs> that's the case in this one. Um, Come on in so the chat. Happy, so yeah, ha half the album is is got it. Uh, so, uh, has what, Ted and half the other. What kind what kind of deal? Because I mean, back then it was it was still fairly. You know, fairly a new thing for you know underground death metal bands to like, you know, ha be signed or whatever to a label. What 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 was what was the uh, what was the uh, I guess the work the details the workings of 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 dealing with the label back then. Well, we didn't we didn't know that we were signing a bunk ass contract, but we can talk about that a little bit later. Okay. But so basically, I mean, I I I don't fault uh, Marty. I don't even know if he's still alive or not. I know the guy that was the booking agent that fucked us and Autopsy and Incantation and Vital Remains. He's dead. Uh, but anyways, um, uh, the deal was not. I mean, all it was was like, okay, you're gonna go in and record, and here's the budget, which was I don't know if we spent even $2,000 on that recording, maybe a thousand. I don't know. It wasn't much of anything. It was a couple of days in the studio and that was it. Yeah. And then, um, and then he signed a deal with relativity and Grindcore for uh, distribution. Uh, and then because Grindcore was coming up as well. Yeah. And so Olympic and Grindcore kind of were in cahoots together because they were both from Illinois and they both used relativity for distribution and then we uh and then they did that grindcore uh records compilation that we were on with a bunch of yeah. bands uh but really it was i mean we he, we were supposed to do more records with him and why i say we got screwed was basically we started writing some really more bizarre stuff later on and we had gone through a million lineup changes and he was like Oh fuck! What are you doing? Like you can't do this. And we're like, well, do you want us to change the name? And he's like, no, I put the money behind the name Morg. And we were like, well, then you, we can do this. It was the newer shit that would have happened that never happened that there aren't really recordings of was sounding more like uh, Pandemonium and mm. uh, Hallucinations era atrocity or like um, yeah, that's technical shit. Or even, but then also into like. I ain't gonna lie, like John Zorn, Naked City territory, like bizarre stuff. Like we were yeah, gonna yeah. start doing like some really weird shit. Yeah, it's cool. He on. wasn't he wasn't really into that at all. And in in hindsight, I'm kind of glad that things kind of went the way they did. Things always go the way they do for a reason, you know, one way or another. But um, but yeah, I mean, it was what it was. I mean, when I listen to the album, I I don't really particularly like the final mix of it. I think Phil did a great job engineering it, but um, there was like three or four different mixes to that. And yes, you're right. Thank God we did break. That's exactly what I'm saying. What a That's fucking exactly jackass. What, what a jackass. No, no, what it's true. Know. Because if we would have put out another album, people would be like, because it wouldn't, it wouldn't have been the same kind of stuff. It would have yeah. been a little different. And I'm, right. so I'm kind of glad that it, that it, it, it ran its course. I mean, yeah, we had, I mean, we had gone through three drummers We'd gone through multiple guitar players. I mean, yeah, uh, it's, it, it, it's kind of somewhat similar to like old lady drivers doing the first album and then the yeah. second album where they like completely weirded out, you know? So, yep. Yeah. I don't know. You know what? I don't know. Not, a truer statement has never been uttered or typed. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's one of those. Yeah. Right here. I don't know if that's, that's Aaron right. or Dominic, but yeah, that's fucking hilarious. That's Aaron for sure. Yeah. Okay. No, it's true. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So the, let's let's talk about band photos. There's some iconic band photos in Tomb to Front of the Cross, <laughs> fucking uh David Vincent cutting himself and all that shit, right? And then the, and then there's this motherfucker right here. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Where uh, take us take us to this moment in time right here. Fuck. We used to do stupid shit. We would just get in my fucking my shitty diarrhea brown 1980 Chevette, and uh, we'd pile in and we'd just go to different locations and take band pictures. Yeah. On this particular day, though, we had a friend of ours named uh, Clark that uh, lit that um, went to high school with us, and his dad was a groundskeeper 
at uh at a cemetery and uh it was badass um and so his dad was super cool and he had just dug that grave and let us get in there and we took some pictures in the grave even better than this the dude took us in where the incinerator was yeah. and uh, showed us the incinerator he gave me a fucking coin that had melted in the incinerator yeah. um there is a story that i that if ted was on here i would have him confirm it but um one of the serial killers uh was cremated at that cremation site and i think i i i swear ted has a tote the toe tag from a serial killer that's actual that's real because Clark's dad was the one that did the incineration on that on that body. Um yes, it's on Jefferson Street in Joliet uh in near Joliet Junior College. Uh do I still have the coin? It is somewhere in my house. Yes, the, the melted coin does exist. And that Impetigo shirt was the first Impetigo shirt uh that they ever did, uh Carl. And uh, that was uh, printed by the guys. The macabre dudes printed those for uh, Impetigo. I think you could confirm that with Steve-O. Um, this is my yeah, favorite part of the photo, the fucking excavator, the back of the <laughs> in the, in the shot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's fucking great, man. It was, it was weird. I mean, we used to do stupid shit all the time. We, we spent so much time just going to cemeteries, taking pictures. Um, we, we have a lot of... Uh, had a lot of fun doing it too. Like, I, I don't know. Ken was one of the guys that would take our photos, our buddy, Dan, uh, this girl, Karen, there was a bunch of people that would, that would take, take pictures, but we would go all kinds of places and fucking right. just do yeah. stupid shit. You guys, you guys played some shows, but let's, uh, let's go to, let's talk about this, this fucking tour here. Um, Oof. memories yeah. because memories of so this, many. this tour. Yeah. Like, I mean, What's the I, first thing me, you remember? What's the first the, thing well, you remember about this? Uh, man. Um, so the first thing I remember is when the dude told me that he's going to put together a tour with Autopsy, Incantation, Violet Remains, and Morgue, and I almost shit my pants. Because <laughs> um, I was already writing and writing letters to Jeff Gruslin and John McEntee and had interviewed Autopsy in my zine, and Autopsy mm. was my favorite band. Yep. And I was like, oh, my fucking God. So this is... So this is autopsy during uh, right after um, Axe nice. and yeah. and right before Shit uh, Shit Fun and this is uh, Incantation Golgotha yeah. and Vital Remains for uh, Let Us Pray yep. and our debut album. So like it's like a the dream tour, right? So uh, I remember getting ready for it. Um, how jazzed we were to get to fucking go on tour. It was me. The lineup was me, Ryan, Nick, and Larry. Larry and Ryan were 16 years old and graduated early. They get to go on tour. Uh, Nick was 18, just out of dead fetus. And I was the old man at 21 uh, <laughs> on the tour in, in our band. Uh, we were care, literally, take care of those young men, Brad. We were literally just a bunch of little kids in a van that yeah. uh, I had to have my dad co-sign for just to get a van. And we got this huge shitty van and I drove it out. To the, we drove it out to the first show. Well, we drove out to Rhode Island, spent about a week at Gruslin's house, hanging out, and uh, we and then uh, eventually we picked up Steve, our roadie. He was going to school at uh, Rochester uh, in Rochester in New York. But the first thing I remember was we pulled up at that first show uh, in New York City. I parked. We were like the first ones there because we're a bunch of little fucking idiots, and. Uh, so we're there before the sound guy, before anybody from the club, any of the other bands are there. The first show, and we're pulled up, and we're just like hanging out. We're like on a sidewalk in New York City, and this fucking semi or car comes flying by. It was a truck, and just sideswipes my uh, rearview mirror, and just like pulls the rearview mirror straight off the van. And the guy didn't even hit his brakes; he just kept going. Holy <laughs> he, just, shit. he was like, <laughs> took it off and just kept going. And uh, yeah, so we so that was our welcome to New York and welcome to touring life. Uh, wow. that, tour, that tour was uh, the best time of my life and the worst time of my life at the same time. We got paid shit. Uh, we barely made it show to show, but man, it was fucking a blast. And I wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah. Uh, so many crazy, weird stories. Like 
getting pulled over. Larry was 16. He pulled over on the wrong side of the road. He pulled, uh, he pulled over on the, on, in the fast lane and the, and the cop like bitching him out. And then we were in New Jersey and they have all these roundabouts and I pulled out going the wrong way and was going dead, like in the oncoming traffic. And it was a cop car coming at me and they pulled me over and fucking, and asked me to do a sobriety test because they're like, why are you pulling out the wrong fucking way? And I'm like, oh, I didn't see the median and the turnabout thing or whatever. I don't know. There was a lot of shit. There was a lot of stupid fun shit on that tour, man. There was so much shit. Um, but the best thing about the best thing about the tour, though, was just, I mean, getting to watch those three bands every single night. I mean, I'm talking about Craig Pillard era, Incantation, Jeff, Jeff Goldblum era, Viral Mains. And fucking Autopsy. I mean, they were my favorite band. And I felt bad for Autopsy on that tour because the turnouts were not at all what we expected. Like, if if they would have toured one year or two years earlier when Mental Funeral came out, yeah. every show would have been sold out. But that was a weird era. Like, that was that weird era where, like, some bands were start. It was like the black metal thing was starting to happen. Like, it was starting to be this, like people that were playing death metal or playing black metal now, and like we're yep. moving away from it. And there was a lot of like shows that weren't well attended. Now, granted, don't get me wrong. The shows that were well attended were fucking insane. Like great, great shows. The show in Chicago and Aurora was fucking amazing. Show in Jersey was great. Shows in, uh, in California were great. Texas shows had amazing openers. Fucking uh. embalmer in, in Ohio, the Ohio show at Flashes killed. Like there was there was definitely good shows on the tour, but then there were the off nights that would be like there'd be like next to nobody there, be like a hundred people or less than a hundred people there. And I'm like, this is fucking autopsy, man. Like, how come so when they came back, when they reformed and like got to do all these giant shows, there was nobody that was fucking happier for them than me, man. Because as you know I, I mean First things first. I'm fan first. I'm not a musician. I'm a fan, dude. I'm right, a, right. I'm just I'm just a, some dude who loves all this shit and likes to fucking listen to this shit, man. Who cares yeah. about whatever? And so I was so happy for those dudes because those dudes like deserve that. They fucking deserved it back then. And I was like, what the fuck, man? How come there's not more people here at some of the shows? Well, and some of the shows were well attended. So I mean, here's the thing. I remember at that time. People may not be, may, may find it hard to believe because how well known they are and how they play all these big fests and all that. But your your average like death metal guy wasn't really the the like the people that kind of come and go. They weren't really into autopsy. It was more yeah. about fucking suffocation and and deicide and all that other crap, right? Yeah. But autopsy autopsy back then did not have that 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 fucking uh you know massive fucking fan base. They did it. And because yeah. I even had friends that I used to go to shows with, and I told you, I'm fucking pissed that I missed that because I didn't have a, my friends that I normally would go to shows with. Oh, I don't want to go to that show or whatever, but I'm like, dude. And, uh, and they just, and it just kind of, it kind of blew my mind when they came back. Well, how fucking oh, oh, topsy or whatever. Yeah. Like, Cause I think, correct me if I'm wrong. You were on that. Didn't they, they didn't finish the tour or did they? Incantation did not finish the tour. Oh, okay. um, they, they they went they went home after half of it because they were worried that they weren't going to have enough money to get home from California. Because what happened was the promoter, the guy who booked this whole tour, unbeknownst to any of the four bands, was taking advances from the promoters, saying you got to put down so much percent ahead of time. And we didn't know that. And then we would show up and we'd get paid less than what we thought we were going to get paid. And we already weren't getting paid a lot. I mean, this is 1993. So it was kind of like, fuck, man. And so Incantation, we're like, man, we don't know if we're going to get, we don't want to get stranded in California. So I didn't yeah, blame them. Going we, east west, yeah. yeah, yeah. We started in New York and ended in San Francisco and we did the whole country. And like, and I mean, fuck, dude, we were little kids. We didn't know. So we were just like, who cares? I guess we're just going to go for it and whatever. So, and uh, <laughs> Aaron, Aaron asked about Aaron asked about it. You tell, tell, tell the story or you started telling me about because Absu opened up for you guys. At, oh, yeah. Dude, the talk, Texas about, shows, talk about them like they're, they're set or whatever. Absu were fucking crazy. 
uh, somewhere on my Facebook page, you can find the photo. I have it somewhere in one of these boxes around me, but, um, uh, yeah, fucking Proscriptor came out with a broad sword. He had this giant sword that was like fucking, I don't even know how long he's swinging around and he got on the mic and like chanted a bunch of shit before they even started playing. And we were like, oh, <laughs> fuck. And like they got up and they just, yeah, they killed. They were great. And then the very next night. Um, oh, dude, yes. That flyer. Show that flyer. Yeah, so then the fucking next amazing. night was, was this shit. And uh, look at that. And this, Autopsy and, Inc. and Vital Morgue. Azadal, which is is a band that needs a demo reissue, we talked about, and Divine Eve opening up. Yep, and Divine Eve fucking just smoked. They just, I, I mean, we Chris from Autopsy knew about him, and the rest of us, and he was just like, check this shit out. And we were all standing there. My jaw was on the goddamn ground by the time they were done. I was like, these dudes are Texas fucking cyanide, man. These yeah, guys are exactly, they were, like, exactly. they were fucking so goddamn heavy. Three so good. I, I still love them, man. Fucking those dudes rule, man. Uh, uh Michael, I still talk to on uh through Facebook. Yeah, Michael Sleeve. Great, great, great dude. Man. I'm, uh, fucking, I'm thinking about asking him to be on the show. I would love it, man. You should have him on because and, those uh, dudes, those dudes are that talk about a band that just fucking that doesn't get talked about nearly enough man they they just fucking kill man now where is this <laughs> that's in the middle of a desert somewhere uh I, i'm gonna guess around arizona ish uh and uh yeah that's uh, everybody in the crews from that's all of more vital and autopsy and all of our crews um, incantation had dropped off by this time apparently right? they, yeah yeah they, they 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 stopped right before uh, after the Chicago show, so they did the first half of the tour, um, and then and then they were then they were off after that. Uh, yeah, but yeah, great. it was it, it was it was a great time, man. Yeah, those dudes all were were super cool, man. I I have a lot of good memories from from that tour, and again, yeah, we were just a bunch of little fucking kids on that tour. I know there was a old tour in the U.S. That's badass. He, yeah, I mean, with with I mean, shit. Ryan and Larry were sixteen. With autopsy, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with autopsy, no less. I mean, come on, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was ridiculous. I, I mean, it 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 couldn't have been it couldn't have been a, a a better time. I mean, I'll be quite honest. Like the first half of the tour, I was so fucking in awe. Autopsy, I like <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't until like halfway through the tour that I started talking to them regularly, I was like, yeah. just like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm on tour with Lost House. Holy shit, look at this. This is fucking incredible. And the dudes that, were, that they had, I mean, that was Freeway from Immortal Fate um, yeah. playing bass for them on that tour. And Freeway's awesome, dude. And they their did, crew... Uh, they did Doom sets, right? On that tour? Was, yeah, so uh, Petrie from Doomed was uh, one of their other roadies. And just for select shows... He would come out as an encore. He yeah. would come out, and uh, Freeway would jump behind the drums. And Chris would grab the guitar or bass or whatever. Or Chris would grab guitar, I think, and then Danny or Eric would grab bass, and they'd do a, a song from the Doom Seven. It what ended up being on the Doom Seven inch, and uh, yeah, that was fucking sick, man. So and yeah. Are, oh, uh, I see uh, Derek in the uh, chat talking about Rick and yeah. Rhode Island. Dude, Rhode Island was sick. That was one of the best shows. And yeah, I still talk to Rick every now and again. Uh, love that dude. He's awesome. Ricky was the drummer of Vital Remains at the time. Uh, super cool guy. That lineup of Vital, dude, that particular cool. lineup was the love best, it. man. Love Rick, it. Yeah. Ricky on drums and Joe on bass and Paulie and Tony on guitar. Jeff and coming Drugland. out looking all evil and shit. With yeah. Dude. And all that. Oh, dude. We you, uh, here's a great story. Uh, so right around when that when that uh, picture was taken in the desert. Uh, we were driving through the deserts and, uh, we, I don't know, we'd shot some fireworks off out the window of our van. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, I don't know, like an hour or two later we got pulled over and, uh, and our van got searched. Well, some of vital vitals, mic stand was in our van because they didn't have room for it in theirs. And his mic stand has like, <laughs> the, yeah, like yeah, inverted, yeah. like, you know, the whole thing. So like the cops decided they wanted to totally, totally go through all of our shit and like, and search our van. And they did, and they found nothing because we didn't have any drugs or anything yeah. in the van. Um, but uh, we fucking, it was funny watching them pull that mic stand out and looking at it and being like, 
Because then they were like, oh, shit, yeah, we're going to pull all this shit out. And at the time, we used to, again, no GPS, yep. no uh, cell phones. So if a band, usually we would caravan, autopsy, incantation, vital, and us. Incan was off the tour by then, but us and vital and, and autopsy would caravan. If one of us got pulled over, the, the other two bands would pull over at the next exit and wait for the next band uh, to, to, get, to, get, you know, to get to them. And uh, so they were waiting for us, and they were like, well, what happened? And they're like, yeah, they pulled us over and searched the van. <laughs> and then, they're like, they, what happened? I'm like, nothing. They saw Jeff's, they saw Jeff's mic stand and got a kick out of that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So after, so more, more was, you said, was pretty much done after that, after that yeah, so, tour. Well, we, we did, after the, actually, after the tour, we did some more shit. Uh, we kept playing uh, just random shows, and then we did a couple of headline tours, just short ones. One was out to, uh, yeah, the roadmaps for sure, man. Atlas is What's all up, the way. Joe? Um, uh, used to always either go out to, um, uh, we used to either always go out to the East Coast, and do, we did a tour, and then we did one down south, and that was the one oh, where yeah. where we did play Houston again, and what was weird was we are we had to we left our drummer in in a hospital in Texas because he got super fucking sick and we don't I don't even know what from like I <laughs> he touched something in that voodoo shop in New Orleans and then he got sick two days later I don't know but there's there's pictures of him sleeping outside of ho uh, outside of some of the clubs in a fucking sleeping bag his name was Brian Stream he used to play in a band called Epitaph from. Uh, from the Illinois area that was all like, I don't know, technical shit, but he was a cool dude too. Really weird dude. He would play naked sometimes or shave half of his face and just do wacky shit. I don't know. Anyways. Uh, yeah. It, so we, we did a couple tours after that tour. Uh, so that tour was 93 and we stopped playing in 95 more oh, stopped playing in 95. And then basically then I had a I had a hiatus from playing music because the dude that ran Olympic Records basically told us that he owned anything that any one of the four of us recorded for the next five years, uh, and that's what I meant by signing a bunk contract. Yeah. Um, so we found out later that yeah, that was true. So basically, if I would have wanted to play music or or put out anything, he could have he would have technically had the rights to it. So, so I didn't do shit for a while. Was this the next thing like that you did? Yes. Yeah, I did. So, uh, well, okay. So b before Tumblr, I did a band. So there's another band that um, Mark and I started right around the same time as Tumblr. Mark, Mark Burial, AKA Baldwin from Champagne. So this is after, this is when I moved to Champagne. Uh, Illinois, which is a college town in the middle of fucking nowhere. Uh, uh, it's where the University of Illinois is. Uh, it's about an hour away from where the Impetigo boys were over in Bloomington, Illinois at uh, ISU. Uh, and uh, first, uh, I was in a band called the Trombones with Mark. I played drums, and it started out more like a circle jerk, sex pistols, punk rock thing. Yeah. And then at the end of it, it was more like um, first album, Helicopters. Uh, yep, Trombones. That's right. Yep. Uh, it was like uh, uh, that kind of shit. So it was like first album, Helicopters, early Turbo Negro, shit like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, fuck yeah. Central Illinois Metal Fest was a uh, killer. Um and that was the only metal thing that would happen once a year in Champaign was a central Illinois metal fest. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, so I, we did, I did trombones, which was kind of more like a, we'd play parties and shit like uh, keggers and bullshit. Uh, it was a punk rock thing. And then, yeah, started doing Tumblr uh, with these guys. Uh, the guy in the, uh, uh, the one guy next to me is Steve Hill, who was the roadie of Tumblr. And then the guy next to him is uh, Jason Casanova. He plays in a band, uh, I don't think there's probably a lot of people who are into the stoner rock scene on here, but uh, he plays in a band called Sasquatch from uh, California now. And then the guy on the left is my old good buddy, Jay Vance. Uh, and he's, he was the drummer at Tumblr. And yeah, Tumblr started 
Oh, uh, that was probably uh, trombones and tumbler both started around 98, 99, I guess. Um, did Scott and, record uh, the trombones demo? <laughs> well, he, he did. He did not. He did not. But I did record him some shit, and uh, yeah, he did play the trombone sure once. He, he he may have came, uh, but uh, it was more. It was definitely more punk rock for sure. I want to check um, that out. I, I, I didn't know about this thing. And I, I played drums on it. Um, there might be one song, uh, Mark. I don't know if Mark is still in the chat at all. He was. He was earlier, but uh, uh, Mark would would know whether or not there might be one song called "Abnormality" might be up on the um, on the on YouTube somewhere. So you might look up uh, "Abnormality." Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we were on Man's Ruin. Yeah, Roy. Yeah, that, um, yeah, you know what? I saw that on the photo. I was like, hey, I know that label. Man's Ruin. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we, we uh, long story short, Steve, uh, yeah, well, the reason why is because I had a skullet, Scott. By this, by this time, my hair, I was almost to being a Nephilim twin. Um, but seriously, yeah, I mean, I would still have my hair long if I didn't lose it, uh, just, just, just so you guys know. Um, anyways, uh, <laughs> I, I, I can't rock, dude, if I looked half as cool as the Nephilim twins or as Adam from cardiac used to look before he shaved his head or Carl from gates of slumber or the, if I, if I could look as cool as those dudes, if I could look like Conan, the barbarian, like those dudes, I would, have. I would still have my hair, but I don't, I must, I, I was a sad, sad looking skullet. So I always wore the hat. Before, before I forget, hey, uh, either Scott or you, uh, if y'all could get me those songs, I want to hear that shit. The, the trombone stuff, <laughs> yeah. I want to check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. so yeah, we did. I, I did. Some, we did the trombones, uh, and then uh, and then we and then I started and then I was doing Tumblr at the same time, and Tumblr was. I mean, it it, it goes. It definitely we we signed a man's room, so obviously it was uh, stoner rock style stuff. It was definitely a situation where, like, I wanted to play shit that sounded like Black Sabbath, and yep. the other dudes wanted to play some shit that sounded like that kind of stuff, and uh, that lasted shit like ten years. Uh, yeah. I mean, we we probably played as many shows as Mord did, um, and and then after that was when Mark was like, when Mark sent me some songs, and I had just had fucking that one, but two kids. And uh, Mark was like, dude, um, I wrote some death metal songs and I want you to put vocals on them. And I was like, dude, I, don't, I can't do a band. I got two little kids. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, and, uh, and then he sent me the songs that were without vocals that ended up being, uh, that ended up being the 2011 um uh, demo for oh, before yeah before we get into a sconder let's listen to yeah. those of you that never heard it let's listen to a little snippet of a tumbler track right now okay from the your your demo right demo yeah 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 yeah, yeah we did a demo and then uh steve finagled us on the band's ruin somehow and we did an album with them and then uh man's ruin went up went bankrupt and uh frank was a good guy frank kozik uh really cool dude um texas guy originally 
uh, Austin area, uh, moved out to San Francisco and obviously made his money doing art and then poured his money that he made from art into the label for a long time. And then it just fucking took its, ran its course. Um, he was super cool, easy to work with, great dude. Um, and then we ended up doing another record on Small Stone Records out of Detroit. A guy named Scott uh, ran that label. It was super cool. The demo was put out by another buddy, uh, Scott um, Drager, who's actually in the chat. Yeah, he, saw one, he, uh, he put out the demo for us on his little label called Small and Mark Bills. That's why he said he, that gave him a yeah, paper cut. Yeah, he got a paper cut, cut yeah. Yeah, because he had to cut all those fucking inlays for that demo. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, we, we'll get into Absconder in a minute, but I want to go ahead. Sure. I think this band came out uh, maybe after or something like that, but uh, another band you were did was Wrist, and you played drums yeah. at Wrist, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, so I drummed in I drummed in trombones, and I drummed in Wrist. Uh, I love playing drums. Um, I suck. I'm not a good drummer. <laughs> But I have, fun, I have more fun playing drums than I do singing or playing bass or playing guitar, to be quite honest with you. Um, there you I mean, are. I, you up? Yeah, yeah. Um, so we played some shows. We played uh, Risk. We played with Aut We opened for Autopsy. We opened for Derkada. Um, I don't, and then played some local shows. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and, and, and it's basically Risk happened because it was uh, in the middle of a sounder. Um, Josh, who was also in yeah. and out of the chat, um, he, Josh, our drummer from Absconder, moved up north, uh, back up north uh, to um, Aurora area. Yeah. So he's like two and a half hours away. So we we're like, well, what, what, what can we do while he's not around? And we, so we started doing Risk. And then we also started a project uh, called Grim's Ditch that we uh, started that never recorded any. Well, we did record. Um, there are some recordings, but they have never been released to anybody. But that was more like new wave British heavy metal style stuff, um, and the wrist stuff was more like we're Fraser trying to just, just, Fraser just like perked up. Oh, well, you got the British yeah, yeah, heavy yeah. metal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I will. I, I will. Yeah, Fraser, send me your your email address, and I'll send you like some uh, just like SoundCloud um, rehearsal stuff of. Uh, there's a couple songs of Grim's Ditch. That Mark did. Mark's, I can't say this enough. Mark Baldwin, Mark Burial, the guy who's in the trombones dude, the absconder dude, the wrist dude, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. He is the most prolific songwriter I've ever worked with. The guy writes songs like you wouldn't like, like right now, he probably has a hundred or more songs on his computer in his basement that he has demoed out for us to do in various projects. And it's like fucking, I mean, he, he can write. So it's so easy for him. It's kind of like, uh, Adam Neal from the hookers and Savage master or Chris black from super Christ and, and high spirits or like Jamie from Boulder and midnight or Nikki from the helicopters and in tune, they just like write a million songs They're good songwriters. You know what I mean? And that's what he is. He's just like a fucking songwriting machine. The dude can just write and write and write and write. He can write faster than I can write lyrics and song titles. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> so anyways, yeah, yeah. We, we've had a few projects and this wrist was one of his that he was just like, yeah, let's just do some shit that sounds like venom. And so, uh, so yeah, we did, we did the wrist project and it was, it didn't really sound like Venom. It never sounds like that. You always say you want to sound like something. It never, it never sounds like that. Well, band, but, let's, if you um, haven't heard it, if you've never heard Wrist, and uh, let, 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 uh, let us know if you think it sounds like Venom or not. Let's check it out. <laughs>
yeah, I, that 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 song fucking kicks ass, man. It's like a, just like ah, fucking fist, yeah. fist banging fucking mania, you know? Yeah. Well, it's funny because uh, so the story about that song, rocking and blasting like shit, is uh is just something that Mark and his good friend Rob would say every day in high school. They'd just be like, "We're gonna rock and blast like shit." And so we just wrote a song. He just wrote wrote the song about it. And uh, he, would, I mean, he always. That's Mark singing and playing guitar, and then uh, uh, Mortal Matt Matt Mortal, the other guitar player of Absconder, playing bass on that. Um, and Matt and Mark have a project called Renal Failure that sounds like a cross between Impetigo and Extreme Noise Terror that's never what? been released that you would love. <laughs> yeah, yeah somebody dude. Uh, yeah, somebody mentioned that earlier. This yeah, that's Josh. Josh. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's, 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 I mean, again, those guys, these, they write so much shit. Uh, Matt is the same way. Another guy, prolific songwriter. He's the other guitar player in Absconder. Those guys just write so much shit. And shit that is in all different facets of music. Like, yeah, they got all kinds of crazy shit. Like, you wouldn't believe all the crazy shit that these dudes have written and recorded. But, like, it just never gets, they just don't put it out. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like yeah. they just do it for fun and whatever. And uh, I just feel fortunate that I get to play with these guys. I, I've always, I've always felt like <laughs> I'm always the least musically talented guy in my band. Always in every band I've ever been in, and I kind of like it that way. I like, I like that because a, it pushes me to be better, and b, I get to play with people that are good. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I know the feeling. All right, yeah. so let's, uh, let's jam out. Let's let's get into some of my Absconder songs. So let's listen sure. to a uh, little. Let's listen to some Absconder. Sally. Sally. Yeah, Sarah. I'm over at the well site, four two three Archwood Drive. Send a car over here. Get hold of the coroner and have him send out the hearse. Call the hospital and see if they can bring an ambulance. Not hurt, are you? No. We're gonna have to transport a lot of bodies to the morgue. last riff right there that's like, one of like <laughs> I, know, I know i told you when i first heard that but that yeah. da, 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 i was like dude that just fucking like ah, you know fucking <laughs> getting in the fucking pit and fucking shit up dude. Yeah. that's that's uh well let, 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 let me go back to my buddy richard's comment which i was gonna say if you don't know who that is in the fucking what that photo is it's classic yeah oh yeah i wanted to make a shirt we never did it but i always wanted to do a shirt with laying on there yeah, and, that, and for River's Edge, obviously, huge influence. Uh, Dude, that fucking movies, movie. Movies are definitely a big influence on me for vocals and for lyrics and shit. And, like, River's Edge is one of my favorite movies ever. Absolutely love him. Um, yep. And, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah. All right. So, uh, let's get to so, uh, Scotters. You said you, uh, the, the first demo was, like, 2011. Yeah, 2011 was the first one, and then uh, and then we did a split with Anatomia, and like yep. 
2012, I think. And then we hi had hiatus probably 13 or 14. Yeah. That was uh, when Josh moved away. We did wrist for a while. And then, um, and then Mark started writing some other stuff. Um, and we started back up doing stuff. And uh, yeah, the first, the first demo, the 2011 demo, um, Mark uh, wrote a majority of that. Mark wrote a majority of all this stuff. I'm not going to try to take more credit than due. He, he is the fucking master. Um, so uh, 2011 demo, I, I, had, I just had kids. I, I had super young kids. And Mark was like, I got this stuff I want you to hear. I want you to, I want you to sing for and I was like, dude, I don't have, I can't do a band. And then we, and then he he sent me the songs, and they were so fucking good that I was like, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> and then and then it was just gonna be for a recording. And then he was like, let's just practice. Matt lives just down the street from you. Literally, he lived seven houses down from me. He's like, let's just get together like whenever you can. So we did that. And then he was like, we didn't have a drummer. And I knew this band, a uh, local band called Leproso, and they had this drummer, Josh, who I fucking loved. And uh, uh, that's Joshua Avila in the chat, for those who don't know. And uh, and so I asked Josh to join the Subsconder band. He's like, dude, I got Leproso, and they're my boys and all that. And I'm like, I'm not trying to take you away from your band. I'm like, this is going to be a project band at best. I got two little babies. You know, both of my kids were like under four years old. They're both still in diapers. I don't have time to be, you know, we're not going to really, it'll be, we'll be lucky if we ever play a show, you know, it'll just be something to get together. Just check out these songs. And then I played him the songs and he was like, this is kick ass. I'll do it. And so we did that. And then we ended up playing a couple local shows. And then all of a sudden we got asked to do some shows, uh, other shows, um, we got asked to do the, uh, as Paul from uh, <clears throat> Embalmers mentioning over there, the uh, Buffalo Day of Death, uh, Brian, RIP, uh, asked us to come out. He liked that demo enough to invite some shitty little demo band from Central Illinois out there to play a show. And uh, and we did, and it was fucking awesome. We got to play with fucking Prime Evil and Grave Hill and fucking Cardiac and some other great fucking bands. It was yeah. uh, good shit. Is this, and, is this uh, show, right? These photos. Uh, that those photos are from the Chicago show. Oh. The first time we played Chicago, and that that was with uh, that was for John Medallion from Slayer magazine. Oh yeah, yeah. He flew, he flew in from Norway. Um, John from the band Bones from Chicago, uh, yeah. who also played in a band way back that I knew uh, in the more days. He played in a band called Agnosia. They were a demo band. Check out that demo, Agnosium. Uh, it's him on bass, and uh, actually Dan, the singer of Usurper, played was the singer on that band. Uh, anyways, John John's wife had done the editing on that uh, uh, Medallion Slayer book, and John was going to come in and do a book release show, and so Bones were going to play, and John asked us to play, uh, and we asked Nunslaughter to play, and then we got uh, Acid Witch to play, and uh, that was the show. Uh, and it was at the Beat Kitchen, and it was in Chicago, and it was the hottest fucking show I've ever played in my life. It was like a thousand degrees in the club. Anybody who was there will tell you it was horrible. It was so goddamn hot. Um, uh, but it was, but it ruled. Uh, and that was the only time we ever played Hacksaw by uh, Terminal Death Five. Yeah, and uh, why? What I remember about us playing Hacksaw is Scott Carroll coming, coming, beelining from the ba very back of the club when I said we were going to play Hacksaw to the very front of the stage and whipping a fucking beer bottle and going completely <laughs> fucking berserk. Wait, while wait, we played wait. He, he actually went up to the front of the stage? He did. Wow. So, for Hacksaw. It was it was a Terminal Death cover. No, yeah. Who else was who else covering yeah, yeah, yeah. Terminal Death? <laughs> yeah, it, he's like, it wasn't for your band. It was for the song. That's, that's <laughs> Ad nauseum, the Apple yeah. Dumpling game. <laughs> 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 So uh, Agnosia was the band that um, John from Bones and Dan from Usurper were in. Uh, and <laughs> and uh, yeah, they, they were, they were, that was the name of their demo was Ad Nauseam. It was actually a really cool demo. I would love to see it uh, put out on caustic cassettes, Aaron. Yeah, um, but anyways, 
Um, it's good shit. It, it was good stuff. They played a couple times. I, I, uh, more played a couple times with them. Uh, they were cool. Uh, uh, Josh is asking if we recorded yeah. the absconder version of terminal death. I thought we warmed up with it when we were recording, uh, the anatomia split, but I don't know if Matt, uh, actually hit record when, and recorded it, to be honest with you. I don't know that there's an actual recording. Uh, I wish there was, though. Yeah. Uh, uh, and by the way, by the way, Korthon McKinnikin over here, that's uh, that's Mark uh, from Absconder. Oh, I, I Korthon came, came back from the grave to fucking join us. <laughs> I've, been, I've been wanting to fucking call out his name for a while now. It's like, Korthon in the fucking chat. That has... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, <laughs> Jim uh, always Jesus. always love a Jim Kanye quote. If you want to yes. get sick, just ad nauseum. <laughs> oh fuck, man, Jim Kanye, I love that guy. Yeah, oh man, fucking weird. Yeah, hell yeah. People gone, man. I know, I know. It's it's weird nowadays. Like it's just it's just weird. Like you people, know, like the other day when Johnny Z, it was just like. Yeah, dude. Just, none, of the, none of this shit seems real to me. Like it's, it's like, God damn it! I'm now like I remember being a kid, sitting at the dinner table, listening to my parents say, "Oh, did you hear so and so died?" Like almost every day about like some famous person, and now it's like it's every us. day it's us hearing about somebody that we knew yeah, died. Exactly. Oh. Fucking weird, man. Man, we, we can't talk about Jim Kanye. We got to talk about Steve Eggs, and we got to talk about Mitch then, and then we're gonna. Oh, go actually, off. you know what? I'm, gonna, I'm recording. I'm recording. Uh, I'm recording a six six episode with Steve Eggs tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> I fucking love Steve Eggs. Steve Eggs rules. There's a picture of him and me at the uh, at the Hell's Head Bash and yeah. at Central Illinois Metal Fest. I love that guy. Fucking yeah. rules, man. Yeah. That dude. He he's into all the same bullshit as me. I, I, that dude was cool as hell. Yeah, man. Yeah, so I'm I'm recording a, a episode with him tomorrow. So yeah, that's awesome. So what is, what's up with uh, Scotter? You guys got got any? Are you, I mean, I I know you did the split with Ruin that came out. Yeah. So so, so yeah. So we did the so we did the we did the 2011 demo, and then we did the split with Antomia, and then we did the Cursed Atrocities demo. And then we did the uh, destruction of the lower half demo. Yeah. We did the split with ruin, and the next thing will be the thing that Clay's putting out, split seven inch with Cemeterian. And Ooh. then we got, and then uh, and then we got uh, the the album that we're gonna do now. That we're we whittled it down. So Mark had folders of seventy something songs. And we whittled it down to 28, and then now we've whittled it down to 12, and that's going to be the, the of what's going to make up the the full length. And I I was trying to hold out and try to be a sadistic intent and never put out the full length album, but uh, <laughs> I find we finally just caved and said fuck it, let's just we we just we're going to die before we can get all these songs done and and out <laughs> that, that he has written, so we might as well just start fucking putting like shit out so we're gonna do that next uh and that that's the plan um i'm cool. really i'm really uh uh and and mark says that those 12 still suck um and and yeah mark did buy uh some steve egg shirts uh there's me doing my best disgust or in my backyard <laughs> with my new, yeah. with my, with my new uh, like, that was just yesterday right yes yesterday in my backyard in, in the grip of winter Oh, with, with, our pup, with our with our puppy Clover uh, freaking out there, um, yeah. Well, I don't know. We, um, I mean, Esconder works in a weird way nowadays. Just it's obviously Josh and and Matt are still around and and can contribute yeah. whenever they can. Um, and Mark and I just get together when whenever we can and hammer shit out. He's got shit set up in his basement in the murder shed, which is his basement. And uh, we just oh, yeah. go down there, and he plays shit for me, and I say, "Cool, let's work on those songs." And then we start working on them. And I, when it comes time to do vocals, I get into a closet and make a lot of noise. And uh, every every recording, we try to we kind of have a little different of a feel. I think, like, I don't know, like uh, the 2011 demo. Like, I don't, 
the everything had like 2011 stuff was more like death thrash it was like definitely like schizophrenia era sepultura maybe influenced and then like the split with anatomia songs i think we're more like harmony corruption napalm death style stuff i don't know but like and then we went more for and then in when the cursed atrocities stuff when we when we were writing that i think mark was listening to a lot of golgotha and a lot of dismal and mm. uh and for the and for and then uh the destruction of the lower half i don't i don't know man um uh, those are my favorite songs as far as recording wise like that was probably the the best production we did but um i don't know what we were going for there and then the split of ruin it was definitely like a conscious thing that like i was listening to a lot of the austrian shit especially like disastrous murmur like oh, yeah, yeah. red and like the first the earliest pungent stench and the earliest disharmonic orchestra where it was just like let's just make it like really like just really like yeah. gross sounding yeah and then and then for that for the split with cemetery and the songs more like like in the the lurker song it's more like uh sacrifice the evil spirits era coffins like that first early coffin style stuff and then new stuff's kind of all over the place but it's more it's got more speed to it than some of our some of our older stuff it's got some more faster you're, stuff in you're there not too. bringing uh, you're not bringing john zorn into it yet right no no we're gonna we're gonna leave john zorn out uh john john zorn <laughs> would have made it into a, a second morgue album but not an astounder material no 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 definitely not all right if anybody well, I mean, has I, questions uh if anybody has yeah. any questions for brad go ahead and put them in the put them in the in the chat yeah and, and, and he'll answer them uh so let me ask you this well when was the last time you read Turtle Soup? The last time I read Turtle Soup? Turtle Soup fucking rules. Did Steve Eggs just ask you that? I I, I can't reveal my sources, but I, I always ask shit that people yeah. I always ask people that don't expect ask shit you don't expect. So uh, sadly I don't have I don't have an issue with Turtle Soup right now, but I need one. I need that again in my life. <laughs> I had it. I, I actually met uh, Eastman and Laird. In uh, 1990, no, 1989 at a at a comic book convention, they were the guys that invented the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And yes, I was like a super nerd into that shit back when before there was a TV show, before there was mo movies or any of that shit. Yes. Uh, Aaron, what's your favorite Chicago metal band, and why is it Hanging Dead? Because <laughs> they're straight to the top. But the but the answer the real answer to that would be too hard to answer. Like, but I would but Devastation Illinois might be my favorite um, Illinois band ever. Um, but E but E Trope's got to be right there. Fucking Barry Stern was the epitome of Chicago metal. The dude that just fucking like loved to fucking party and loved to fucking be as metal as fuck. That dude ruled. Uh, what clubs in Rhode Island did Morg play? Uh, it was not the living room. It was... Baby Head? Oh, God damn it. Why isn't fucking one of the vital guys... Baby Head or no? Uh, it might have been. There's a there's a great picture from that show, and I'm wearing a Righteous Pig shirt in that in that oh. picture um, from that tour, and that was fucking great. I... I want to say Head Rot maybe opened that show. It was Head Rot, Us. Derek was in um, Head Rot. And Vital and, uh, well, you guys didn't play? What the fuck? Yeah. Um, God, who played then? Who opened that the show with Us you know, and Vital and Incantation and, more, and Autopsy? Almost 30 years ago that fucking tour happened already. Yep. Yes, Cranial Hemorrhage and Bleeding Cranial Violence. Cranial Hemorrhage? Yeah. What is that? The fucking end of that devastation song? You're fucking dead. Yes. Oh, dude, fuck, it. dude, those guys were so fucking great, man. <laughs> God damn it. I agree. I mean, they, really, I mean, and and the first the first syndrome demo, fucking the devastation oh, stuff. Oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, fuck, dude. I could go on and on. I mean, uh, I mean, the there was so much shit that went on in. Uh, oh, confetti was that it? It might have been Con club confetti. That might have been it. I, I want to say that you you could be right. 
Could be right on that. Another Chicago band that never gets talked about that I'm glad Dark Descent put out was Maimed. And I'm yeah. glad to see that uh, that David over uh, in Europe on Extremely Rotten did the Contagion demos because those were some of my fucking favorite bands to go see and to play with. Um, back in, this, back uh, in somebody fucking Masada. Earlier. Somebody mentioned this. <clears throat> yeah. Masada, the fucking first Masada demo? Fuck. Oh, yeah. Scott Ooh. just mentioned that. Yeah, Masada fucking ruled that early. That And it was weird. Masada were up from like the... the uh, north, like way north, like up near like Numbskull, which I love those dudes. Um, hey, and, did, and I ever tell those you, did I ever tell you that the drummer on that on that Masada demo was the drummer on the first HRA LP? Get the fuck out. I, I knew he was in Texas, but I didn't know he was on the album. Are seriously? Yes, Andy. He was in, a, oh my he was god, a, he was an evil incarnate too. Damn, Andy. holy shit, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, 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 he gave me he gave me he gave me all the Masada demos. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. Original oh, copy? No, 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 no. He he he, oh. he had like he he burned it on a CD for me. But he yeah. uh, he uh, the first one it kills everything else. The other stuff. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 For sure. For sure. But that was like Wait, but battery, battery fucking vocals and shit. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean. There was so much good shit coming out back then. I mean, again, even like, um, oh, Funerary on Vinyl, that's sweet. That's awesome. That shit. I mean, Andy always rules, no matter what he was on. Fucking Andy from Cyanide. I mean, when he was back when he was doing Funerary when he was doing Contagion, everybody would be like, fuck, that drummer. He would fucking rule. Oh, Andy, Andy, I mean, Andy, yeah, Andy yeah. is fucking, uh, when Scott was on, uh, dude, that dude is as solid a drummer as you will find on this fucking planet Earth, and I'm talking yeah, about yeah. And Andy from 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 uh, Cyanide, right? But uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, Aaron from Go Throne was just talking about Dan Hassey. Yeah, he did. Dan, ha yeah. Dan Hassey, one of my best friends growing up. That dude is is the goddamn fucking logo master. I know there's another dude in Europe that calls himself logo master, but dude, Dan Hassey fucking used to just rule doing logos he did so hey, many so many logos that never got seen and shit like totally great i'll, I'll send you i i'll send you the my uh, the the copies i have of that masada demo you won't find a better sounding copy so oh well then you gotta send it to me i'll, I'll, send, it. I'll send it to you i, I, I need I'll, it i need it I, uh, there's a lot he, of shit that needs to there's a lot of other shit that needs to be released or re re-released from illinois man i'm a Masada demo yeah, man. Needs to be put out. I'm glad. I'm glad. Like this little lost realm label did that. Uh, that uh, Maelstrom demo stuff because that early Maelstrom. It's not death metal, but it's fucking good. Like good metal shit. Um, and like uh, that Nodis stuff that came out. Like that that one demo and not the the eighty five demo that Nodis did. Fucking ruled. Oh yeah, yeah. You know who man, talks about that a lot? Mark Sawickus. He's always mentioned. Oh. oh yeah, man. And speaking of Mark, you want to talk about like. Bands from his area, like that you should check. It, are you familiar with the Semi Sids? Did you ever listen to the Semi Sids oh, from Central that. Illinois, Bloomington, Illinois? Fucking great punk rock band. And then also, of course, Naked Hippie. Oh, yeah. Like, Naked, Hi Naked Hippie literally are the only other band that can stand up to that first life sentence record for me for mm -hmm. Illinois hardcore. Mm -hmm. Illinois hardcore to me is the first life sentence. The first naked hippie and the first impulse manslaughter. To me, Dude, that's classic. that's where though that that's that's that shit fucking rules, man. I have all of those. They're fucking amazing. Yeah, and I mean, there's naked a. Hippie, I mean, naked hippie needs to get a fucking reissue, man. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, fucking Aaron. The fucking Aaron, album and the demos on the CD. I, I, yes, yes, yes. Hippie rules. Impulse. Uh, there was there was a there, and then for. For like the early death metal stuff, like Zyklon B, who were like this like weirdo band that yeah. were fucking great. They put out the Gornography demo. They were gonna be signed by Wild Rags. They were gonna put out uh, it on uh, on Wild Rags, and they never did. They should have because that shit ruled. It was the guy from Outcasts, Jack uh, Jack Swan, who was in the Outcasts, who was put out by Wild Rags. He was he was the drummer in that band. Um, the bands always killed it. I traded with Cyanide and corresponded them. What fucking Scott wrote you back? I'm unbelievable. <laughs> well, we found out on here that he 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 uh he has a letter from 
And he was supposed to reply back to Andy from Flynn, and he's he never did. He still has it to this day. <laughs> oh amazing. man, it's fucking amazing. That guy, yeah, was, that, guy, that guy preferred the couch even back in fucking 1990. Fucking Scott. <laughs> I, I I understand. I compl- I'm with him right now. Oh, no, I, trust I, me. I, um, I tell him. I was like, dude, I'm fucking turning into you. The, old, the older I get, you know, I'm four, 47, and, and I know you guys got me by a few years or whatever. But yeah, like I, I just remember Scott saying all this shit. I was like, fuck, I, it, that's me now. Yeah. <sighs> Did yeah. you send yeah, a fuck, self-addressed dude. stamped envelope? That's fucking great. He better have if he wanted to return. <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't know, man. There's there's a lot of good shit, man. There's so much good shit. Like I I every time somebody's like, oh, tell me about some Illinois bands that I might not have heard of, I I'll I'll, I'll think of like some weird ass band that I saw once or twice here or there, and it's just like it's crazy all the shit that came out like back then, like and weirdo bands from even like in Southern Illinois, there was this band Gutted Pulp that did this demo that was like this super burpy shit like it was like total like guttural shit it was great oh, or like uh, there, and there was a band called Tarata that were from Peoria they were like central illinois um who were who were really cool that did like three demos um that that um right guy that Ign- Ignazia guy and fucking here's one and here's fucking all that band. here's an illinois band too uh, that's on this flyer ah. uh, i gouger Fuck yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Gouger's down by you now. He lives yeah, down he in is, Houston, right? Yeah, Johnny Kolzik. Johnny lives down there, and uh, he was an eye gouger, and then he was in Impulse Manslaughter before yeah. that, man. Yeah. Um, he's a good dude, man. I have a lot of like great. It was uh, a wild show. Did this happen? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, because, you know, Mortuary. And, and, and it did know. happen. It did happen. And Duaniac, uh, if he's around, uh, he probably remembers that from Blood of Christ. Um, so the, oh, but the sign and I, but the sign, yeah, that was mortuary way back in the day too. That was yeah. like legit. Um, and, uh, yeah, so Cy and I got so drunk. I think they only played one or two songs. <laughs> Scott, I think you can confirm, but I'm pretty sure he, he, he's, he, 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 they played one or two songs and then they were like, we're fucking done. That's a uh, it was, it was a mess, but it was fun. Uh yeah, that was a good show, man. Maimed played Maine, and cyanide, Lord, cyanide, eye gouger. Yeah, and a mortuary, and yeah, it was it was crazy. Um, <laughs> there was there was a lot of weird, crazy shows back then too that that uh, that would happen. Um, there was <laughs> almost three songs. He said they almost played three songs. Here's another one. Here's <laughs> another one. Here's another one. Uh, cyanide morgue. After Shit, did that one happen, Scott? I can't even remember. Where was that at? I can't see the, the location. Uh, the at the top. Is Bedrocks. Oh, that one might have got canceled. I don't know. <laughs> I like I like I like a grindcore recording artist. Oh Olympic yeah. Recording artist. I remember people yeah. put that on fly. You don't see yeah. that anymore, right? I no. Like no, that was just like a thing for a minute. Like that was like from because yeah. back then you'd go see demo bands all the time, you know. Like there was a place called Foches in Chicago that like yeah. all these bands would play. That's where I saw Dead Horse when they were a demo band. Uh, and uh, let's see, hold on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dead uh, Horse from Houston, of course. Hell yeah! Hang on. Um, yeah, here's a. Uh, Here's the copy of the demo I bought from them at that show at, at in at Foch's in Chicago. Yeah, I have that one. Uh, that's Roger Dead Horse. The, the yep, old, same, old same school. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and you know, but you never knew for sure if they were actually going to show up or not. Um, right. Oh yeah, that show. Here's that was the show. yeah. Me- King, so King, King Fowley brought us out to uh, out east twice for shows that were kind of fests. But he, the one he called, this is not a fest, and this is the other one. Uh, yeah, this yeah, one was yeah. super fucking crazy too. Yeah, there was a lot of fucking. Laceration bands is on that? that. The, that's that's an Illinois band, right? Laceration. That was not the Illinois band. That was oh. some East Coast version of Laceration. But there is a Laceration from Illinois, yeah, uh, which the... which eventually turned into like Avernus and November's Doom. But yeah, the yeah. Laceration shit was killer. Yeah, that's right. That's another fucking Illinois band. That's right. 
Yep. Yeah. For for that show, that was out east. Uh, I was in Pennsylvania, a place called the Cell Block. There was a million bands on that show. I just remember uh, Deceased headlined it. And I remember the cops showing up at one point because there was a fight, uh, I think maybe before we played. Uh, but Human Remains played that, and they were fucking great. And Demonacy played that, and they were great. Yeah. And I don't know if Pro Fanatica ended up showing up or not. They were They were on the show... They may not have shown. There was a lot of bands, and like there was three or four no shows. But oh yeah, oh, I'm glad I'm looking through the photos. I forgot what the hell. What is this, dude? Hold on. <laughs> Explain <laughs> this. What is this? Oh, so that is uh at a that's at a place called Kuma's Corner. It's a burger yeah. place in Chicago. And yeah. they did a morgue. They did a morgue burger. They named oh, the okay. burger after us. So they do. It's a metal. It's like, like they name burgers after metal bands. Sixteen and, bucks uh, for a burger. Holy shit! Wow. <laughs> I don't. I didn't eat it. Uh, Tom. Tom went and ate one. Uh, Nev from Chicago, uh, yeah. who does art for Absconder, he went and ate yeah. one. He said they were good. Um, but I was. Just, I was. Surprised that they did that, but that was cool that they did that. Uh, be good for uh, that sixteen bucks. Sixteen dollars, yeah. Sixteen dollars for a burger? Holy shit! Yeah, uh, the the dudes who the dude who who owned it, who owned Kumas, the original Kumas, was super cool. Um, I met him once, uh, and he was a really nice guy. I went there and ate once, but um, <laughs> how the hell does cyanide? How the hell does cyanide not have a burger in Chicago? That doesn't make any sense. Come on, that's stupid. Yeah, I don't know. Everybody, everybody, email uh, Kumas or whatever the fuck. Yeah, is. and say what the fuck. Say, the the fuck burger? Burger? So what? What? What would? Hey, Scott, what would be on a cyanide burger? Let us know. That's a good question. <laughs> what would be on that? What would be on a cyanide burger? Beer, first of all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A pizza somewhere. Yeah. In yeah. 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 Um, the buns are pizza. The buns are just fucking pizza dough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I don't know. But um, so what was on the uh, Morg Burger? Shit, I couldn't even tell you. Oh, I couldn't oh, even shit. tell you. Uh, there's a picture somewhere, um, but I I, I don't know. <laughs> cyanide, cyanide would be on the burger. They fuck anybody <laughs> who kills it, fucking dead. No, it would be. Oh, it'd be It'd probably be some beef, uh, and then and some like uh, yeah, some sort of Italian beef uh, between two pieces of pizza. Yeah. Well, well, Andy's Polish, know. right? So we got to put some kind of some kind okay. of Polish sausage in the burger. <laughs> oh, uh, Scott! Scott gave us his 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 uh, story on this, and uh, this you you remember this? Man, not only do I remember it. I, I would like to ask Scott if I'm the dude right here with the back turn. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. That, you? It, that, that might be me because I was standing that close when that happened. Yeah, so he, I was there. I definitely saw that was 1990 at Michigan Day of Death 1 uh, in Jackson, Michigan. And fucking Trey Azekthoth in his hand has the cyanide demo that Scott with his bag there. And yeah. Trey's like, oh, yeah, this looks cool with his fucking – beer and then he tosses it back in that fucking bus and there's a god i know that's me and that's and then the goddamn dog just started fucking eating that tape <laughs> if you haven't watched it hey what there's i actually cut that clip of i think that clip of scott just telling the story look on the channel yeah. and scott scott fucking tells it tells us oh my story. god it's fucking yeah. so look on the channel yeah. and scott, Scott Scott Carroll, Morbid Angel, or whatever. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> yeah, that 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 show was fucking that was that was the best show ever, dude. Because that was like that was before even Day of Death in Buffalo. That was like yeah. right after Milwaukee Metal Fest three. Like we got the flyers there from Metal Mom and we we're like, holy fuck, like these are all of our favorite demo bands. Most of those bands like Morbid maybe Alters had just came out and Deceased was just like first album. Yeah. Everybody's first album coming yeah. out and like Sacrifice maybe it was their second album was out and maybe they were getting ready to put out their third or whatever. It was just around that time. 
that show just fucking ruled fatal or fucking incredible. I know Scott likes to give me shit about being the fatal fanboy, but, um, <laughs> and, uh, and Baphomet replaced Ex Mortis and even the people in the crowd, it was just like fucking Derkada's there selling demos and McEntee selling demos and Will from Mortician selling demos and like, everybody's selling shit for like $3 a piece. And me and Ken are just trying to buy every goddamn piece of merch we can get our hands on there. Cause it was like, it was the first time I had ever met most of the people that I had been writing to, you know, like, cause most of them hadn't played in Chicago yet. So yeah. it was just so fucking cool, man. It was yeah, just, yeah, God damn. Right. It was ridiculous. So, uh, going back, going back to Kumas, Kumas or. Ah. Always White Castle for me. <laughs> Always. Although Joe's Hot Dogs and Joliet forever. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's Hot Dogs I, I, I have a, I have a, I have a, a, a secret source that. Uh, uh, yeah. I asked about shit. That I know. I know you're big on uh, on White Castle. Dude, I love White Castle so much, and. Fucking in Joe, I mean, growing up in Joliet and then and being in Chicago all the time, it was like that was like I would eat that shit all the time, man, anytime I could. And moving down to central Illinois, there's not one where I live, so the closest one is 45 minutes away in any direction. Um, but every time I can get uh, to one, hell yeah. Hey, is that is that place, uh, whenever I was in Chicago, uh, Scott told me about that fucking hot dog place that, uh, I guess oh, the, he stick, the stick where they fucking cuss at you or whatever. Uh, Gene and Jude's maybe. No, or, no, no, no. What's it or, called? Uh, What's that fucking place in Chicago called where they, where they? It's even been like on Conan and shit. Oh, Conan you're talking Conan. about um, uh, um. Oh God damn it! Um, what the fuck's it called? Oh God! I'm, I went during um, the day, so it wasn't bad. Oh yeah, you went. Okay, cool. Wiener um, Circle. That's it. Wiener yeah. Circle. I even bought a shirt. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I even bought a we I still have a Wiener Circle shirt. But uh Man, when I just want to know when when one of Francisco's bands are gonna play in Chicago. Oh yeah, that's not happening. Well, I don't know, maybe, maybe one day. Uh, yeah, that'd be awesome. Only time only what may get me to Chicago is maybe just to go see a show. Uh, yeah. uh like if like Cyanide like plays once in the next five years, I might go. <laughs> That's probably about how many times we'll play live in the next five years. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll go. Uh, uh, no, it's I'll always go worth it. it's always worth it, regardless of where. Yeah, it's I'll at. go bother. And yeah, Paul, Paul from Embalmer. I see that. Yep, I I've eaten a ton of. Every time I've been in Cleveland, that's where I eat. <laughs> Twenty <Lake Castle>. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even Matt. Yeah, I know they came up for shows, but you know they're they're they're. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, dude, I have. The word, if, the if the there's, you know, there's, uh, <laughs> I'm too busy being the next Jay Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, there's the uh, Sears Tower, there's Wrigley Field, and there's Scott Carroll's couch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fucking Chicago, yes. Chicago landmarks. <laughs> yeah, for real. Oh <laughs> uh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Anyway, we're not going to turn this into a fucking food network. <laughs> and they easily could turn into that too, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, all these fucking fat ass, all these fat asses in the chat. Man, oh man. Yeah, anyway. I don't know, man. I mean, we we literally, I mean, yeah. Sometime you should do another show that's just about history of Chicago shit. Yeah, I know. Dude, there's, I want to do it. There's there's a there's a there's a buddy of ours. Uh, of all of ours in Chicago that's been working on a book. Uh, and I, I, I don't want to say anymore because he'll probably get mad at me for even mentioning it, but there is supposedly going to be a book about it, but we'll see. Uh, um, but there, there's just so much shit, man. There's so much shit that came out um, yep. throughout the years. It's just like endless. I mean, and, and, and the bands, I shit. I wish there was a documentary just about the club Foches that I used to go see shows at because that place yep. was fucked up. And and saw so many great shows there, bands I never thought I'd see. That's where I saw uh, Deceased the very first time they ever played Chicago. That's where I saw Dead Horse. Um, fucking, yeah. that's where Impetigo played. Uh, Macabre, of course. 
Um, I Gouger played there. Fucking the band, this band Pain that nobody talks about. Pain, oh, bro. dude, that demo rules. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you've heard. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, that demo I, I know, I know. I would, I would love for that to get put up. Torture Emporium demo. Yeah, um, good demo, man. Yeah, fuck yeah, dude. Um, but there's a lot of shit, man. And uh, and yeah, I mean, um, uh, some uh, some there's some other old shit too that that never got put out. That's not that old. That should be put out. Um, Vesican, <clears throat> Aaron. <clears throat> Anyways, um. Yeah, there's some, there's some, there's some other old shit that needs to need, needs to see the light of day for sure, and uh, and there's some there's some great shit that came out. <laughs> I'd, like, I'd, I'd like to request somebody to put that shit on TV because I don't really uh, don't yeah all the, all the shit on CD. Do it for me, man. I'll buy a CD. Yeah. Just I just I don't know. I mean, if I still have like old tapes, yeah, I listen to them. Yeah. But I don't really I don't really buy like tapes anymore. Yeah, I mean, I get it. I'm the the format stuff I, I mean anymore it might come down to people that were doing cassette or vinyl labels turning the cd just because of the turnaround time yeah. is is already stupid for vinyl which like um i'll just say here uh, ted from the crypt that did the morgue repress vinyl or the did the morgue vinyl uh he's he's been trying to repress it um and that was supposed to come out <laughs> the repress of the morgue vinyl was supposed to come out at the end of last year and it's still not out. So, um, but, uh, for those who are still looking for eroded thoughts, vinyl, don't go pay a million dollars. Hold out. Ted from the crypt is repressing that. I promise you that. Th th this is absolutely true. I don't want to, I was like, fuck, I gotta go flip over an album. Fuck all that. Yeah. I no, totally get it. I'm I'm, I'm I used to be that way with seven inches. Now all of a sudden I'm I'm all about like buying seven inches. I don't know. I it, it it you know things come and go as far as what you what what you prefer. I've always been a cheap ass. So my thing is what's the cheapest cheapest <laughs> medium I can get? And right now CDs are like you 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 can find CDs a shit cheaper than you can find cassettes. Like if you're looking for some older record that was put out on both cassette and CD. Right now, the CD is cheaper than than the cassette, so I buy the CD anyways. But yeah. fuck. I just, oh, oh, I I forgot to ask ask about this. Who are you watching play right here? Fuck. Okay, so that's at Waukesha Day of Death, and that's me in the front with my Grim Death shirt on. God damn. Uh, let me see the guitar player there. Can you scroll over to the guitar player? Yeah. That looks like. I want to say Oblivion from Canada, or I don't think it's Revenant. Revenant played that. Hell Witch played that. Immolation played that. Um, God damn, that was a great fest that no, barely nobody was at. Doctor Sh played that. More the Skull played that. I like those. Um, I, like those uh, I like those tough guys right here in the dark with their arms crossed and shit. Like, <laughs> imp impress me. You're not impressing me at all. Got their fucking arms crossed. Yeah, that was a great show, man. Waukesha Day of Death was a great show too, man. That was that barely anybody was at, man. But that was great. That was that was great. Atheist played that. Uh, yeah, that was when I first met Roger from Atheist. Uh, Cynic played. Um, fucking goddamn. And they were all like demo or first album era. Oh, yeah, there is Ken right there. Ken's in there, right behind the guy next to you. Yeah, the guy next to me is Pete from Shades of Grey, um, who was also uh, what the fuck was his band after Shades of Grey? He's been in a ton of bands, and then right behind him is Ken. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. for sure. You got another picture somewhere from the from that first Cyanide show that we played with them when Mike's wearing shorts, and I'm oh, over yeah. on the side, yeah. and I'm over on the side of the sh stage wearing my Fatal shirt. Oh wait, oh. <laughs> Let me see if I have that. Let me see if I, I think. Let me see if I can find that shit. Where's, where's the fucking, where's my Scott Carroll photos? Yeah. I know. I, yeah. have them, I have them all saved. So I'm pretty sure in the in the picture of that yeah, we that was when we played the Rec Arena in Indiana with uh with uh yeah Illinois has its own brand of mullet that is for sure we, we, <laughs> back in in the late '80s fuck yeah we did we definitely did. Oh, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't. I would agree. 
if you saw my fucking junior or senior pitcher Roy, you would say, fuck yeah, you guys had your own brand of mullet. I wish I go. had those right now. Here we go. This one? Yeah, so that's that's Ken and me. I'm wearing the Fatal shirt right there. Yeah. Right next to me on the left, that's Ken wearing a blur from uh, – I think they were from they were from Europe. He he got that shirt in the mail. He traded is he, for somebody. Is he is he recording? Does he have a video camera? Uh, it looks like he's recording. I believe yeah. he did video. He may have videoed that show. He was in the chat earlier, but I'm sure it's after Ken's bedtime, so he's got to get to sleep. Yeah. But um. But yeah, yeah. And Mike was. Are the short. ceiling are the ceilings really low at that place or what? Or uh, so that was angle? the wreck arena. That was really weird. It was like a. You you know like uh you go to batting cages and shit. There was indoor batting cages at that place, uh, and that's basically where you set up to play. <laughs> that's why that netting is up on the ceiling. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, yeah the other, I see that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's some of the other places though, like the place in Stager, Illinois, Volumes Inc., or like uh, the place that we play uh, that we played that you showed the flyer for earlier with Ignazia and Maine and Contagion. Uh, it's Sir Donald's. They had those ceiling tiles. The dudes would just jump up there, or you'd like jump, you'd stage dive, and then dudes would just punch holes in those ceiling tiles and just destroy them. <laughs> the Mortal Skull guy wouldn't trade demos with me at the time because our demo wasn't straight. Oh, <laughs> that was at Waukesha, yes, yes. That's amazing. <laughs> That's fucking amazing. Yeah, Pete from Shades of Grey was in Sea of Tranquility. Yes, that's true. Yeah, Blur were from the Netherlands. You got it, Paul. That's right. Yep. And and and, and uh, a Scott Scott with his own microphone too. Holy! Oh shit. yeah, yeah, yeah! Check that out. <laughs> yep, wearing his repulsion shirt. Yep, yep. <laughs> and and uh, Mike's got Mike's got the subconscious terrorist uh, contagion shirt on. Oh yeah. Yeah, good times. I mean, I know I showed this on Scott e Scott's episode, but I got to show it, man. This is fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Blair and Perry. All right, hold on, hold on. Uh, so everybody in the chat, who is that? I mean, I know you tell me who that is. Give me uh give me who it's not. Give me a wrong answer. Let's play, let's play wrong answer. Who is this? <laughs> oh shit. Let's see something. <laughs> yeah, let's see that. Who do we got? Who do we got? I don't know, man. He's got that badass fucking Rick, though. That's uh I yeah, think he's still does, Scott. Does Mike still have the white one too? <laughs> Seth Putnam. <laughs> Did you see Aaron? Aaron said. Aaron said. Uh, Bobcat Goldway. <laughs> dead, dead spin. <laughs> dead Bobcat. Yep. Oh yes. He said, Scott said he almost quit the band that day because he was wearing shorts. <laughs> An unused oh. Levi's ad. <laughs> <laughs> man uh, for the record mike is the coolest guy on earth no that's so. obviously that's mike mike rules yeah mike rules i've been wondering and and those oh, fucking yeah. larry bird fucking converse or whatever he's got on oh yeah those are badass yeah oh yeah they're badass yeah. Yep. all right anyway <laughs> yeah he's still got it he's still got it that's awesome that he's still got that base man fuck heaviest he's, band he's on earth blair and Perrin. heaviest band on earth Heck yeah. So anyway, cool man. This has been fucking awesome. This is there's still yeah. a lot of people hanging out. So uh we'll start winding this yep. down here shortly, man. So yep. yeah, I don't know. If fucking, any other any other comments? Any other questions? questions? I, I I missed questions that were way, way early, like before we even started. Yeah, but yeah. If well, I'm I sure. don't know. A anybody with questions except Fraser, go ahead and post them again. Because <laughs> I already I'll know his Frazier. damn question. What are your influences? Do, uh, do, I, do I like New Wave of British Heavy Metal? Yes, I do. Yes, yeah, I uh, like Virtue. Uh, what, what's your guilty pleasure? Uh... All right. Th this is for Frazier. <laughs> hold on. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me put you I know Frazier knows Jameson Raid, right? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Frazier, do you know who that is, Frazier? <laughs> is he still there? Where's he at? He fell asleep. He, nah, he's still there. He passed out. <clears throat> Fraser, do you know who that is? Jameson Raid? Let us know. Let us know. This is Fraser, you know this one? You should. Is that Maelstrom? Maelstrom from Chicago, yeah. Maelstrom. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> H bomb. That's the song. That song rules. Oh fuck! Look at these split reunion. Fuck. <laughs> Oh, He's Lord. looking it up on Metal Archive. How do you, how do you, how do you know? How do you know? Uh, how do you know him, Paul? That's exactly. Do what I still doing. have my car, Vin Aaron? Yes, I do. Still have. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Fifty days. Do you have any? Do you have any, uh, do you have any gear there in that room? Uh, in this room, no, I do not oh, have okay. gear in this room. Uh, I the only I have uh, so my guitar that I still have is my Gibson SG that I still have that I play. For everything, and then the bass that I have here is my Carvin LB50, and then uh, my fiance Stephanie has a fucking uh, killer destroyer guitar um, that's fucking rules. It looks just like Pete Badass. Willis's guitar, uh, and then we have a Marsh Marshall half stack JCM 800 oh, half stack dude. that's actually hers, uh, and then I have, uh, and then at Mark's Mark has a rack of fucking random guitars and basses that we record with. When we record bass shit, it's usually with like the shittiest, like $100 shit bass. Yes, you are right. You are. I oh. agree with Scott 1000%. I always say, I always ask everybody, find another band that's street metal, like fucking E-Trope and tell me who they are. And like the closest that wasn't from Chicago that I've come up with, is frigid bitch from New York, uh, I'm, I'm and then know. there's and then Maelstrom, and other than that, I don't know, man. I, I please somebody in the chat tell me a band that sounds like like Amnesty era fucking E Trope. Because uh, well, since, since Fraser didn't uh, Fraser didn't reply, I got I got I got to do it to you, Fraser. Poser alert. <laughs> he never replied, man. He never fucking poser alert. <laughs> All right, hold on, hold on. How many more releases are there? There's the there's the two demos and the album. Dude, yeah, that that's it. Um, there that was it. Uh, quick it quick and to the point. Uh, so it was ninety to ninety five basically, and. Uh, uh, we had some other songs. There's one song you can find uh, on YouTube called "Dead Landscape." That was uh, there's um, that was if you go to the middle point of a show that we played in Tennessee on the autopsy tour, we played it, uh, and that's the only other recorded song. There's like there, random. I got, I got the original CD for a hundred bucks if you want it. There you go. <laughs> Or just get the repress from Dark Descent for like ten dollars. Oh, oh, hey, hey, don't be cutting into my profits over here. No, uh, yeah, Dark Descent repressed it with uh, it, it. It's a uh, it's uh, the the demos and uh, and the album on there. So and I mean, yeah, Roy, it's kind of hard to get to. Yeah, Roy, uh, yeah, we do have literally like you're right. Five more albums worth of shit for Absconder. Like, not even joking. There's like so much shit I can't write. Lyrics as fast as he can write fucking songs, yeah. uh, but but I want to get as much of this shit out because I listen to this shit. We have we have, he has other like we have there's other shit that Mark has an album of stuff that sounds like Solstice Englander. Uh, we have he has an album of stuff that sounds like Venice Hardcore that sounds like Excel and No Mercy and fucking Early Suicidal <laughs> that I want to do vocals on really bad. Um, he's got an album worth of shit that sounds like um, Morbid Visions meets Schizophrenia uh, Sepultura that I want to do vocals on really bad. He's got a ton of shit that like, it's not necessarily necessarily for Absconder per se, but uh, okay. Uh, what happened but, with the Abhorrent but, Funeral split? Good question. So, long story short, we still want to do something with those uh, Polish uh Maniacs, uh, if you aren't familiar with Abhorrent Funeral, check them out. They're from Poland. Uh, Grim, uh, what the fuck? Uh, uh, oh my god, I can't believe I'm blanking the name of the demo tape right now. Um, but they're they they have a great fucking demo out, and they did a split with VHS from Canada. We were supposed to do a split with them on Head Split. Uh, those songs ended up getting used for the Ruin. Um, for the ruin split, uh, and we still want to do something with them. 
uh, we couldn't decide on. I don't. I don't even know how to this, say this, but they wanted us to spend a lot of money on art for the split, and what we and it was going to be on head split. And there was going to be like a hundred copies made of it, so we didn't want to spend a zillion dollars on it. So ugly tales, yes. That's the demo. Scott has a green shirt of a born funeral. Uh, Scott Carroll uh, has one. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the hell Fraser's he Fraser says he yeah. does have that James Ring. What? I don't know what what, what was the name of the band? Ja Jameson Raid. He's just he's yeah, probably, Jameson Raid. Yeah, James. Raid. Yes, I have it on. Yeah, TV. he's doing the voice. He's doing the voice. Yes, Fraser. You can't, <laughs> Fraser. <laughs> Poser alert. <laughs> no. Oh, shit. All right, oh my god. What but yeah, so um, I I don't know. There's there's a lot of sh I I hope that that still happens at some point. A split with Abhorrent Funeral because I like those dudes a lot. Uh, I'd like to do some more other splits with other people. We were gonna do a ton of that kind of shit and just kind of do the sadistic intent thing and just do demos and splits. Yeah. But we kind of we're just like we're we have we're we're backing up way too much material and it's never gonna fucking happen. Fries or rings, um, that's hard. <laughs> at, at Joe's, at Joe's, I try to alternate every other time. Fries or, and rings. How yeah, did I uh, ever hit Rhodes corner to Joliet? Yeah, you. Uh, I think we so, touched on that. Yeah. Yeah. So I was booking a club and uh, I I had was already doing the zine. And when I was doing the zine, um, I was in contact with Roadrunner and, uh, and they, and so I told them, Hey, I'm booking, I'm booking out here. And I knew that, uh, coroner was playing Chicago the night before. And I, and I was like, we have an open night. Um, so, uh, you know, here in Joliet, can I book them that day? And they had a day off, so that's how I got them. It was it was basically a luck of the draw kind of thing. Um, but it was awesome. Uh, they were great. Why not both? Why not both? I love fries and rings. I'll get them both. You're right. Rings. Yep, that uh, was 90, 90 you, Paul. Uh, I think you're right. So who are, who are the uh, Illinois bands, the younger bands that are kind of taking the, taking the I guess, the, the lead See, these days? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, the obvious is Molder, Rotted, uh, Cryptum, um, and those dudes that were. I mean, you got to Aaron from Molder. Like, you got to go through his back catalog because, like, that dude had a bunch of fucking bands that people don't know about. That th him and Dylan had this band, Nefarious, and or I don't know if Dylan was, uh, or maybe that was the other guy from Rotted was in it. Nefarious rule. They did two demos. Scott will tell you that first fucking nefarious demo is fucking evil as hell. Yeah, I actually, before, I heard about them from Scott. Yeah. Before that, they had a band called Vesicant that fucking ruled. He had this band called Ape Shit that was kind of like SOD. Um, he does this granulated thing that that fucking Aaron from Go Throne put out that rules. Yeah. You know, fucking um, Ken and Ted when they get around to doing shit. They got their unnatural thing going on, which I love, because uh, Ted writes all the music and Ken does the vocals. Um, uh, fuck, man, that that's just the Joliet dudes, man. Like I, I don't know, man. That they they really they kind of understand the idea of the riff. You know what I mean? Like uh, my problem with mo like with a lot of the death metal that comes out is. There's not the riff or the hook, uh, something that catches me. I don't give a shit if it's. I don't care if it's fucking grind. I don't care if it's death metal. I don't care if it's technical death metal. I don't care if it's doom. I don't care what it is. Just give me something that's got a riff that that has a hook. And what I mean by a hook is that I'm gonna remember it after I right. fucking turn off your tape or CD. Right. As long as it's got that, I don't give a shit if it's ulcerous phlegm and it fucking rules in that way or fucking pain eater style. Or if it's fucking, or if it sounds like fucking, I don't even know. Like, it, it just has to have some sort of hook or or something like that. Scott's talking about Hitler. Hitler's fucking great, man. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. Hitler and Mess <laughs> Reactions are his favorite bands. The fuck that shit out of here with the Hitler shit, man. It's Hitler. H I T T E R. I know, I know. I'm fucking with. <laughs> 
but yeah, man, there's there's all kinds of shit. Uh, actually, Josh, um, the drummer of Absconder, he plays in a band now called Midnight Dice. Uh, it's a female fronted band, and they're like, fuck, I don't even know, man. It's some of the, it's it's like uh, Pat Benatar fronting a fucking what heavy metal band. Frazier Frazier will love it. Uh, <laughs> Frazier will dig it. With Pat Benatar. Um, as far Noose. as other yeah, shit, yeah, Noose. That's Noose. A, Noose is uh, what's his name? Uh, that's also he was so. In, uh, he was in Noose the is uh, Rob Campos, uh, Timmy, yeah. Yeah. and uh, and Josh from uh, Josh from Laproso Absconder and Midnight Dice is yeah, the drummer. I got, I got that demo from uh, from uh, from uh, what's his name? Rob or Timmy? Yeah, Rob, because from the old uh, the fucking uh, Terror Throne. The metal Rob was a terror. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's Rob. Yeah. Rob Campos. Yep. And Rob was in a band called Terror Throne. He's a weird ass guitar player. I love Rob to death, man. I love that dude. He he writes cool shit. As does Timmy. Timmy was the bass player of that. He also had a band called Death Cult for a while. Uh, he he played in a band called Relentless for a while. Uh, Timmy played with the Chasm, I think, or uh, and with uh, Daniel's other Daniel Horchado's other band. Uh, fuck, somebody help me out here. The instrumental band. He was in that band for a while. Timmy is a fuck. Timmy's a ruler. He fucking rules, uh, just like Rob is. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're, they're, oh, yeah, it's cardiac practice today. I forgot. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, fucking. Hey, uh, I will. We, I will, we didn't even talk about the old about cardiac or their or Tom's old bands. Fucking severed, dude. Yeah. Dude, well, that cardiac, severed cardiac shit. Rules, yeah, cardiac rules and Tom's old bands severed and dog yeah. odd. Man, people don't dog god and fucking severed. I'm glad Aaron put out the dog god, and I hope that that severed gets put out at some point. I know he's got some stuff going on there, but man, that's just good. Um, yeah, cardiac man. Yeah, totally. <laughs> but there's a lot of there's a there's a I, lot I, of good. I, shit, I know man. I know my I know my Texas stuff, but uh, I know a lot about Chicago because I've known these guys, you know, for a while. So uh, you know, I got to learn a lot of shit about like. Those fucking super obscure, yeah, bands, you know, that, you know, all those guys. So, uh, that that's why, uh, <laughs> fucking Scott, you'll never be cool. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> that's all right. Uh, it's okay, man. It's okay. But yeah, cardiac. Car oh, I, I, yeah. Another thing, it's 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 crazy. Whenever. Like I see a flyer for like a band coming into Chicago to play, and like the opening bands or other bands are like cardiac cyanide. I'm like, I don't fucking these. I mean, if you go play a show over there, you better be fucking good that night. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for real, man, for it's real. Insane. It's fucking insane. yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, it's not. It's there's definitely. I mean, Jill says hi. Nice. Good to good good to see that Jill's uh, doing well. I'm sure Freely's uh, hanging out in the snow as well, like our dog going crazy out there in the snow. Yep. Yeah, fucking. There's there's just so many good bands that come on, come on, you know. From hang on, I'm, I'm losing you on my on my earbuds here. Let me get my earbuds plugged in. Yeah. Hello. All right. Are you there? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Okay. All right. All right, so I last 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 question. Uh, yep. You were to put it. You were to put a Chicago or Chicago only area show with, let's say, five bands. Even though five bands is a lot, who would you have on that show? <laughs> were they are they active or not okay. active throughout history? I don't care. Fuck. Okay, so. No offense to any of the bands that I'm going to leave <laughs> off because I would be selfish and pick five bands that I never got to see uh, in person. So it would probably be like, um, fuck, it would probably be like Devastation Illinois, The Boys, um, Witch Slayer, uh, War Cry with, all, with, with the all original dudes. I saw some War Cry dudes Maelstrom and Maelstrom. Probably would be it, man. Uh, it would probably be all the old, like, late 80s heavy metal and thrash bands from uh, Illinois. Because that shit, 
there was so much good shit then that I didn't get to see. Because a lot of those bands, you know, I was 16 and they were playing 21 and over clubs and I didn't have a fake ID. So, yeah. um, so no way I could get in. Now, if it was... We oh, got, now, now these guys some, are getting offended. We got some sensitive fucking, <laughs> fucking wussies in the, in, the, in the chat. Now, if they were current bands, both of those assholes know their bands would be on that bill. Um, oh, no, it could, yeah, it could be, it could be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If it was, if it was, if it was bands that were active today, then it would definitely be fucking cyanide, cardiac, molder. I would say that right out the gate. That's the well, fucking, that's the, that, that's your, hey, you, that's you three guys, of them guys, for sure. You guys just need to write better songs that fucking Brad likes, though. <laughs> that's simple. Write better songs. Uh, no, Fuck, man. man. Cardiac and cyanide have been flying that flag for fucking years now. So. <laughs> you guys rule. You guys rule. Adam's been yeah, a oppressor. Sure. Jesus Christ. No, man. Oppressor and uh, what was that fucking, uh, what was that other one? Demented Ted? Oh, God. Dude, I will say this. I know I'm going to get shit for saying this, but the first Demented Ted demo, the very first one, before they were death metal, and before they were even thrash, it was like a crossover thing. It wasn't bad. Um, but they then they went like then they just like jumped on the bandwagons for sure. Um, but they're but they're but they're very, very first song. Dude, what about the first dead youth demo? Let's get that re put out with the song Smell My Butt Please. <laughs> that shit was fucking great, man. Wait, 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 wait. I missed a band that I put on my five band bill, Francisco. That I didn't get to see, Scepter. Oh, Scepter would have to fucking play. I never got did to see play Scepter a, play. Did they play a lot? Did they play a lot? Uh, they played, but I didn't see them, and I'm an idiot for it. Um, Todd demented Ted show on tour with Unleashed and Broken Hope. Uh, very possible. Yeah, they were pavement. Um, pavement. Right? I saw I saw demented Ted when they were when when before they went death metal. Uh, they changed some members and then went death metal and then became oppressor eventually. I think too. I don't know what the fuck they did. Scott said they played um, enough, so I need to give uh, Brad a poser alert. Yep. <laughs> no doubt. I'm not gonna. Hey. No doubt. Call it out. I mean, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not ashamed. Man. Yes. I. I you're right. Well, I know. You know. There, there's a lot of things I don't know and and. But I do know one thing. Once we start talking about Demented Ted, it's time to end the show. So, uh, uh, yes. So uh, yeah. I, I, we're, we're getting into Demented Ted territory. So that's, that, that's, that's my cue to let's wrap it Thanks up. Thanks a lot for ruining the show, guys. Why'd you have to bring them up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's, that's my cue to end this fucking thing. But Brad, dude, it's been fucking awesome. I'm glad we got to. Oh yeah. Glad we got Thank to you for having time. me, man. Thanks for anybody who watched or listened or fucking talked. That's fucking great. Good times. Yeah, so it was it was it was fucking cool. Like I said, if I get fucking uh, John Gibson. Oh man, I would love I'll it. Get, or if I'll you ever you do on. anything about the Chicago ever, I'm all I'm all up for it. Talk, talk to the guys. I've mentioned I've mentioned it to Scott, and it'd be great to have you and Scott and and. And and uh, fucking Mike and the, we can talk about the uh, the time that uh, the, the fight broke out in front of Medusa's with uh, Paul Speckman and the dudes in Syndrome. Okay. Yeah, there you go. No, I know you guys have tons of stories. That's why I I want to give the fucking I want to not that you guys want it or even give a shit, but I want to talk about fucking Chicago, Chicago yeah, man. stuff and and, and uh, yeah, well we'll talk to your boy Johnny uh, Johnny Tolzik down there and you. Oh God, uh, he's. Uh oh! Oh, your his yeah his 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 earbuds are going out. Your batteries, your battery's dying. That's why we can't hear you. So and now I can't hear you at all. So, uh, so man, got knocked out. <laughs> all right. Well, again, everybody, thanks for hanging out. Hey, Brad, stick around. I'll I'll, I'll get with you in a minute. Uh, so again, hey, dude, thanks thanks a lot. It was fucking awesome. Uh, you rule. Uh, and uh, I'm glad we got to do this. So, everybody, thanks for hanging out again. This has been Badass. Uh, all Badass, if you will. So, uh, till the next one, we hope. I don't know what he's showing. What is that? Oh. There we go.
<laughs> exactly. Till the next one. I see you, fucking guys, fucking guys, and uh, we'll we'll go ahead in the show. Check out this best best YouTube show song ever. <laughs> Yeah, what the hell?